doing a lot of work on the Milia. I'm excited to see what they have for us today. And then the guide here rocking Leo the King. Playing pretty reserved at the mm -hmm. start, right? Normally you see Leo players want to start establishing that pressure early on. Up against Milia, you do not want to give her a lot of room to move. A lot of Milia players will say it's a lot more important to not be able to get caught than it is to actually land confirms, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great awareness from Rat, recognizing that they could run in and get the grab to turn this pressure situation around, playing very carefully in the air. And there's that HDP from Leo just waiting for the one moment that Milia's feet leave the ground. There's a great reversal throw, though this time baiting out the DP, gonna get a nice punish here as well. That solid immediate adaptation from Rat recognizing what exactly the guide wants to do, and this super on the wall break should be enough to close out the round. Absolutely, not the highest damage super, but luckily the extra wall break damage is gonna solidify that win. And again, the guy playing very reserved at the start of the round. There's a DP on the whiff throw attempt. And the guy using that opportunity immediately to get into back room, but Rat recognizes the gap and turns the situation around. The guy bursting at the end of that combo there to avoid the mix-up reset situation, but yet again, just all dis into cross-up. And I love that too. Amelia just drops the combo in the air to fall on top of you and catch you catch you just slipping, right? You're expecting the combo to keep going. And there it is, baiting out the DP yet again with the disc. Rat doing an incredible job right now locking down the guide. And, uh, all I'd really want to see is the guide be more aggressive. Right? Oh, yeah. Be more aggressive. Don't allow Melia to actually move around. The, when you allow her to unlock that movement potential, that's when you lose the matchup. Absolutely. If Melia is on the offense, she is winning. Her biggest weakness is her trouble on defense, both in terms of her defensive buttons and in terms of her defensive statistics. Yes, yeah, second lowest health in the game right after our boy Chip. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are squishy. They live fast and die hard. Oh, yes. That's the mantra they go by, but we're gonna jump right into the next game. And I like how their avatars are matching. They both have the uh, the racing helmets on. <laughs> <laughs> they both gotta strap in for this one. Good music choice too. Blue water, blue sky. Jumping right into it immediately. IAD into JH gets the cross up, then the throw. This time the guide opting for a more aggressive start, but getting punished for it, and again getting punished for that DP the rat making the guide think twice, immediately has to go back on the defensive again. Yeah, I mean, the guide has been on defense so far all set. They haven't really been able to get anything going. Jumping out of the disc, but still in the corner, back dashing the throw, gets a back turn opportunity here in the corner. Impeccable right. defense from Rat getting out of the corner. Gonna RC to keep the pressure going, tries to go for a tick throw there, a little too obvious. Gets called out for it. Both players showing, uh, doing a fantastic job of punishing each other's throw game. Goes for the empty, empty uh, cross up on the other side. Okay, that DP hitting pretty late still gives him the opportunity and oh, punishing, uh, being a little bit greedy after that 5K. One thing that Rat is playing incredibly, is doing incredibly well is playing around DP so perfectly, right? We've seen that the guide has tried to go for DP on a lot of these mix-ups here, and has gotten called out for it over and over. So now you're not seeing that option anymore, which is one of Leo's strongest options. That's right. Rat having to burst to get out of that Leo back turn combo in the corner. There's an R uh, uh, DP like, into yeah. RC. Oh Reset. my god, the mortal counter there on the axe kick, and Rat just explodes. We need to see more of that from the guy. Yeah, very clever from the guy letting the combo drop to get the overhead reset to guarantee enough damage to kill against the wall. All right, and you see the Rat being a little more cautious now after getting blown up. Yeah. Oh, goes to the same side cross up. We're going to get a wall carry to the wall, breaks it with the Bad Moon as well. Positive bonus. All right, the guy playing a little bit safe. I think that's the first fireball we've seen so far in the set. And Rat's content to do this, right? The more they got the guide plays safe here, that Rat can just move around, they're building up meter with that positive bonus. That's right, okay. Bursting to take the corner, but immediately Rat making fantastic use of Milia's aerial mobility. Look at look at Milia dash back and forth, finally runs in, gets a grab, disc. Oh, Bad Moon into RC. Should be enough to kill with a wall break here. Absolutely, and 2-0 right now, Rat. Just needs one more to take this, and the guide is starting to adapt. We're seeing the adaptation there. It's just not quick enough, right? They're getting mm -hmm. caught in a lot of these mix-ups, which it's it's easy to say, just block it, right? right? It's easy to say that because 
you cannot block Melia forever. But that's the main thing, is that the guy is just getting mixed up constantly. Needs to win more in neutral to not even give Melia the opportunity to get that knockdown. Yeah, and the guide is also getting thrown quite a bit. Rat has been kind of opting for the H-disc after throw, which is not necessarily a, a true opportunity for a mix-up, but you still have to figure out what Rat is planning to do after. Yeah, one thing you're seeing that Rat is doing a lot is doing the double jump in the air to try and bait out the DP because if the guide actually goes for the DP, the disc is going to hit them and then Rat gets the punish. That's right. Okay, finally a big counter for the guy to get something started here, but even so Rat gets the opportunity to jump away. There's the H DP. Yeah, Rat needs to be careful with how they poke at that long distance, especially if they're going to try to use Lush Shaker. The moment that you see that come out, the guy is absolutely going to be trying to throw a DP. Nice run up throw. Once again, H-Disc after the throw here is just dashing back and forth, getting another throw, another H-Disc. It does hit the DP this time. What a great option for Rat. All right, YRC, what's going to be afterwards? Just a close slash, stealing back their turn here. But tries to go for a throw of their own, and that's just going to allow Rat to escape the corner. There's a badly whiffed throw, though. The guide was still in block stun. All right, that's going to be enough for the guide to take this round. I mean, gosh, Rat is just playing so slippery, though. The guide is having to work so hard for every hit and has to just go through so much to convert into anything. Reaction throw. Yeah, able to grab that run through there. Great gold burst, though, from the guide. This is their opportunity to capitalize. Doesn't spend the meter, though, after getting the confirm. Again, not spending it, just holding on to all of it. All right. Goes for that super. It was a little late, but still combos into the wall break. All right, and now the guy is going to have positive bonus. 50 meter on deck, needs to spend it. Would they get that confirm or to keep the pressure going just like this? Oh. But the unfortunate thing is that we're seeing a lot from the guide is whenever they actually RC on pressure, they just kind of go with 5P into nothing. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. They definitely could work on having a bit more of an optimized uh, pressure string, but Rat taking full opportunity to carry this all the way again to the corner. There's a reset. Play safe to bait out the DP. And then the run up throw. And Bad Moon there didn't even have, you know, had the meter to cancel it, so you were going to have to hold a mix-up afterwards anyway, and we are at set point right now for Rat. Once again, throws goes for the OTG into the side switch, catching the guide unawares. All right, nice JH. There's the 2K2D. Oh, tried to go for the instant air dash afterwards there to pick up with the JH. Unfortunately, didn't get it in time. Nice overhead. Let's see it confirm. The burst comes out, though. Yeah, the guy finally getting some work done with that back turn, but luckily Rat's doing a great job of really using their burst in an optimal way, and here he goes all the way once again. Not quite going to get the corner, but hits with the second hit of the 6H. I think the guide thought that that was all going to combo because they just got caught not blocking on that 6H, mm -hmm. right? But that's going to be 3-0 there for the Rat. People feel different ways about Testament, right? I've seen some people say that Testament is definitely mid-tier or that Testament is garbage. People are... Um, they have a lot of different opinions. I think it's too early to call on this character, but right now, Ikushisu going to be going up against Testament here. Has him locked down in the corner. Nice teleport, though, to escape, and the throw as well. All right, 2K2D going to go into the record series. Only goes for the first hit and then stops. Nice burst bait, though. Just Vulture going to get sent through the wall with the more. Never mind, gets killed for the yeah. Portavo. <laughs> a very commanding first round here from Ikushisu. All right, quick 6P from Just Vulture, taking some space here. Carefully trying outrange, teleporting off to the left, but oh, that clash. Yeah, so far these teleports from Just Vulture have been kind of on point, right? But unfortunately, they're just getting put in the corner, and Testament's real only defensive option is that 6P. It's but what a 6P. Solid, yeah, incredibly solid 6P, but they're just getting put right back into the corner here. Here we go once again, whip throw, PRC, classic option, backwards, IADs out, taking some space here again. Oh, and there you go, they were able to get the stain state applied, but Ikushisu is so smart, just going for the 2k. All you need to do is touch testament and the stain state goes away. Oh, no. Counter hit, RRC, going to take this all the way for the finish, a quick first game in favor of Ikushisu. Pretty dominant, I mean, you see that blue aura right there, right? That's how you know they are in there grinding on that celestial floor. Absolutely. I mean, one of the huge benefits of that rollback netcode is these players can get high quality practice any day of the week with, from the comfort of their own homes. And it really shows in how fast some of these people are pushing the meta of this game. Yeah, and I like how you're talking about it's it's take with these longer patch cycles, like you were saying before the match started, we're able to actually see the meta develop more over time, right? When Happy Chaos first dropped, 
I remember people saying he was garbage. People were like, this character is trash. Mm -hmm. He's got no defense, yada, yada, yada. Now we're at a state where uh, everyone hates Happy Cow. Oh, yes, how the tables have turned. <laughs> and he hasn't changed at all. It's no. been the same thing. Yeah, I'm very curious to see, you know, over time, how does the Testament meta develop? Because it's still, you know, it's been a little bit, but it's still relatively early on. I really like what I'm seeing from a lot of Testament players. Let's see if Just Vulture can pull anything out in this second game. Yeah, when you talk about those really strong Testament players, one thing that comes to mind is Kid Viper and the things that KV is doing with this character. I want to see if Just Vulture is going to implement some of those skills. Trying to space out with that heavy slash, but... Trying to play that poking game against Ram is so hard because Testament's long-range buttons are pretty slow, at least compared to Ram's buttons, right? Yeah, and Ikushisu with uh, impeccable uh, neutral and pressure here, able to kill Just Vulture without Just Vulture having any chance to use the 100 meter. They lost their burst for nothing in that round, and they have to work from behind. All right, the flip forward, going to push Just Vulture back into the corner. 5K combo off the explosion. Doesn't go for the wall break, wants to keep them in the corner. Great decision. And again, throw after throw. It looks looking like Just Vulture finally able to get out of the corner. A Mortavado in the middle. PRC makes it safe. And Just Vulture was able to actually teleport through the Mortavo. That was actually terrifying for them right there. Oh Ooh. no! I don't think they wanted that Arbor Sign. No. They landed on the wrong edge. They were probably going for Grave Reaper and then got Arbor Sign on accident. Yeah, the minimum range on that uh, coming to bite just Vulture in the butt. Game two going to Ikushisu. Of course, we do have uh, best of five sets yep, throughout. the whole way through. Mm -hmm. But the, the main thing here is that just Vulture's testament is really not able to contest Ram in that footsies game, right? The kind of thing that Testament wants to do is Testament wants to go, wants to throw out those heavy charge fireballs because not only do they stay out for a long time, that while the actual red skull is out there from the Grave Reaper, you can still teleport. The Succubus actually doesn't have to be there. The skull allows you to send the bird and teleport to there at the same time. So it extends the time that Testament can play that kind of mix up game. And that's mm -hmm. something that Testament will have to lean into a little bit more against Ram because it is so difficult to play that footsies game. We're already seeing it. Getting counter hit by far slash, getting counter hit by heavy slash, just over and over and over, and the damage is adding up. Absolutely. I mean, of all of the characters in this game, Ram is especially hard to space against just <laughs> because of the sheer power and range in those S and HS buttons. Let's see if we can see any adaptation from just Vulture going into game three. Immediately, Ikushisu with the pressure is on. There's that 6P getting, <laughs> getting Ikushisu out of their face. Yeah, one thing you're seeing from Just Vulture is they're not going for those heavy charged Grave Reapers. They're just going for the really quick Grave Reapers, which means that projectile won't be out as long, and they're not going to be able to, see, they have to teleport right away, meaning that Ikushisu could just respond by throwing out a button, and if Just Vulture doesn't teleport, that's fine. You're not going to punish Ram for that anyway. That's right, and Just Vulture just getting consistently trapped in the corner here, not able to find their way out, just getting slowly pressured to death by Ram in the corner, the place everyone hates to be. Yep, Sword's locked down now. Not too much that Testament can do to escape. All right, great FDing though. Nice 6P, but the burst there from Ikushisu is gonna put Joel Vulture back into the corner. Yeah, Ikushisu has recognized that this is the position where they are strong and Joel Vulture is struggling. Finally, here's, here's a burst to give them one more chance. Yeah, 100 meter though on Ikushisu's side. This pressure is gonna be crazy, and there it is. Fast RC into the 2S. Just like that, Ikushisu 3-0 over Just Vulture. Really strong soul. You've seen them all over the place winning tournaments. Going up against Mac Men's, who normally plays Anji. That's so right. rocking the Nagori Yuki pick here. Nagori Yuki with the Tims as well. All right, let's see how this uh, switch up. It's just like we were just saying. Sometimes players got to play different characters, mix it up a little bit. I was able to get the close slash confirmed there after the JH. Mira 5 King out of the corner, identifying the gap in Macman's pressure. Here comes yep. the confirm all the way to the corner, backing off, respecting options, but gets, gets it all the way. RC going to go ahead and kill in the corner. Yeah, it goes for the easy combo as well. That's a situation normally where you'll see, if they had more health, fast RC into JH, right? But this time just went for the drift downwards, let the RC hit, knew that the next DP was going to kill. Ooh, interesting Mira backdashing, but <laughs> Macman's playing a little bit patient, able to mash out of the corner with the 5P. He gets a throw. Tries to catch the backdash there with the 6H, doesn't work out. He's going to go for the triple slash there. He's not safe, so forced to spend the meter. Carefully pressuring in the corner. Mira looking for their way out. Dancing just around Nagaryuki's sword range. Look at how well they know it. Finally, they find an opening to jump in. Great tech 
from Heckman's resetting the situation. Great 6P though. Mira's spacing is so good right now. There's the bandit. Bringer tries to go for the 2K 2D, but she's just a little too far away. Both players just trading little hits here. Not a lot of huge, extensive combos in that round. Yeah, and in this matchup in particular, the trades are almost always in Nagoriyuki's favor, right? You do not want to be trading blows with Nagoriyuki with those uh, that 2S and that 5H. Soul wants to be on top of Nago like blue. That's right, and here we go. Macman's operating in that range that Mira cannot. Ooh, the DP clash. I love the FD2 on the DP clash. This time is close enough there for the faster C to land the 2K 2D. Get, that back dash is getting oh, caught yes. by the super 100%. Absolutely great call out from Macman. Give him the heart. Gets the heart knocked down as well. Ukiyo forward into 2S. Finding a counter hit in the middle of that string, but not able to convert it into anything. Mira all the way back in the corner. What's she going to do? <laughs> Run forward, close slash the soul special into the wild throw. RC. That was a whiff punish as well. It's going to get the wall break. A little too much scale there on the wild throw for it to kill. Just needs one more touch. Getting close to chip as well. Okay. Hold first, PRC. So much meter being spent right oh now, but he finds no. a counter hit on the 2K2D and it's still alive what? and lets the DP rip Mira with the Hail Mary DP. Oh, wow. I, that's not how I thought that that <laughs> round was going to end. That's the Soul Bad Guy special. Wow. I thought for sure that uh, that Macmans would be able to secure an OTG hit, but it just wasn't the right knockdown for that. No, not at all. It was so close to almost able to bring that back, but Mira going to go one up now on the board. And Macmans played that so well. Mm -hmm. Was able to, like we said, nearly bring it back. Just got a little too greedy, which is understandable, right? You want to move in, but you have to keep in the back of your mind that Soul always has access to DP. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the forbidden tool. <laughs> All right, going in there. Both players whipping it around. Star taking a little space. Here comes Mir. Okay, counter hit. First immediately. Mira's doing a really good job navigating this far slash and this 2S right now. Stable going to get a counter hit there, force the burst out of Magnus. 5K. Mira backdashing, punishing the throw with. Look at that, the fast RRC combo into the wall. And that's what we were talking about earlier, right? When Mira went for the RC drift downwards, you do that combo if your opponent has more health. Oh, tries to go for the 5k challenge afterwards. That's three frames. YRC comes out for Macmen. Just trying to get something going. Triple Slash Series is going to get them back a little bit of blood. All right, we've been here before. Mira trying to find the opening. And again, another whiffed grab from Macmen. Mira knows exactly when Macmen wants to do that second time that Mira has backdashed and punished the Which, attempted grab. It's really surprising because Mira has not really not really presented the throw option of the strike throw game, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a surprise that Macmans is actually trying to call out these throw attempts because Mira hasn't gone for a throw once. We got one wild throw. Right here is a solid counter hit combo for Macmans, taking Mira all the way to the corner. RC, RC, throw tech. Okay, first the DP, that was going to be a clean hit. Once again, playing a little bit of footsies here, finding the 6P, no conversion off of that, just not quite the right spacing. Oh, built up the meter in time to actually get the confirm. Could have confirmed there as well, but doesn't spend the meter. Okay, there's a normal throw finally coming out from here. Great backdash on the close slash attempt. All right, and here we go. Just trying to lock down with that far slash pressure. Baits out the throw attempt yet again. And gets the OTG kill with 6H. Mira up 2-0. Macmans is just falling for these shimmies over and over and over, and that damage is really adding up for Mira. And you have to think, Macmans needs to consider that Mira is not showing off that throw is an option. That is, what, four times in one, one little match right there that they got blown up for that? Yeah, the right throwing out that throw right at the end. All right, but here we go, going to what could be the final game here, unless Macmans can really turn this around. All right, 5K, gonna get thrown though. All right, there's the jump forward, 2P, just trying to fish out with the 2S. DP, nice, big damage here. Point blank, Fafnir is able to grab the Fafnir. No confirm afterwards though.
All right, 6H. And he's just, Mira is just playing this so perfectly. Macmans, he's not really sure what he needs to do right there. He's going to RC to keep the pressure going. Yo backwards to create some space. Counter hit Beyblade, though, not going to be enough to kill because of the combo choice that they pick. All right, counter hit 2S into 5H. Macmans is going to take that round. So Macmans finally starting to really figure it out a little bit here. As I say that, they get counter hit by 2S. Low slash. Okay, gets the far slash counter hit. Firm that into DP after running forward. BRC forward into the DP. Working out so well, but just a well placed close slash from Macmans is going to allow them to fight their way out of the corner. Still has a lot of blood to be able to get things going, but one bandit revolver confirm, and Mira is going to tie this up in rounds. Alright, that run forward, 2S yet again, 6S. Bandit Bringer trying to go over the 2S there. Oh, a great back dash there on the far slash attempt, but a burst there from Mira is going to put Macmans back into the corner. Here we go, fast RC combo, going to get that wall break with the clean hit DP as well. And 2S. And you see Macmans is just trying to figure out how to escape from the corner here, but Mira's spacing is so on point. Run up 6H to punish the far slash attempt. And that is 3-0 there from Mira. This is an interesting matchup because Happy Chaos cannot really do that that traditional Happy Chaos zoning game, that lane zoning game that you see all the time against Axel just for the sole fact that Axel has these long range buttons. Right. So we're already seeing Kudo Geo trying to play a little bit more aggressively. Yeah, Kudoju having to take the offense in this matchup. All right, here we go. Here's a full screen situation, but he has a curse. And the curse doesn't matter, though. Axel can just run up 5 feet to shut that down because you have to remember, Happy Chaos cannot block when they have their gun out. Right, oh, <laughs> clone PRC to get in there with a punish. Stealthy burning that burst to get out of that combo. Yeah, and it's really fortunate here for Happy Chaos as well, or excuse me, for Axel as well, that 5P will actually hit Happy Chaos when they have the gun out, right? Normally 5P will whip on crouching opponents, but Kudo Juu doing a great job establishing this pressure in the corner, gonna take the first round there with a throw. Look at that string that they did. There were two standing dust overheads in there, just continuing the pressure with dust, gun, dust, gun, and here we go, the little kick combo all the way to the corner for the round stop, round start wall slump. And that was all over an IED at round start over the 2H from Stealth. Selfie. Looping wall slums. Finally, Selfie going to find the tech to get out of there. But there with Kudo Geo with the 6S. Yeah, Selfie is consistently getting blown up by Kudo Geo's use of clone right now. <laughs> These slump combos are disgusting. Stealthy just has to guess. Finally guessing right, though. DRC tries to go for the JH. Gets the fast dust, but not able to get anything on it because they had no meter. 2S punish there. Okay, yeah, delete this character from the game. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> no. Yeah, great stuff though. Kudo Geo taking game one. That was really great knowledge and awareness there to know that you could punish that with 2S to be able to go into a confirm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely liking what I am seeing from Kudo Geo. And of course, like we said earlier, that this matchup kind of showcases Happy Chaos's ability to switch between being the long range demon that we've all uh, grown to hate and this close range monster. Yeah. I love those slump resets. I mean, not only that, it's so scary to try and play footsie sometimes with Happy Chaos because we've seen the use of clone PRC to be able to punish you afterwards with that 6S because the 6S pushes so far, and also that he can cover all of his whiff normals with a gunshot. Yo, <laughs> IAD with the reverse K hit. Yeah, that Rarely Yori seen. kick. 6S there is going to counter hit the 2H attempt from Axel. 
Pressure in the corner, Stealthy trying to find a way to get out. Again, there's that Clone PRC denying the opportunity, and Rusty just gets the throw to seal out the round. Yeah, and Clone PRC in the corner there specifically is really solid because Ax most of Axel's options to try and escape the corner are going for Rainwater to try and hit you or IED back JH, right? Yeah, now here we go. Stealthy operating at the range that they want to be in. Not quite full screen, but oh, the situation has turned as Kudo Dio takes one hit and converts it into a combo all the way into the corner into the Deus Ex Machina, which is going to wall break at that distance That's from downtown. Two guaranteed curse setup, absolutely. And I really love the way that Kudo Geo is playing, but this could be exactly what Stealthy needs. Going to break the wall, which is unfortunate against Happy Cast, but luckily Stealthy still has some range. Yeah, just a little bit more meter would have been enough for Stealthy to seal it out, but now you've got to make it through. There it is, there the 5 feet, And that is what makes this matchup pretty decent, actually, for Axel. <laughs> it seems like it's really just a question of making sure that you're at the exact right spot. you got to be in the Goldilocks zone, not too close, not too far. And you have to also keep in mind, too, Axel actually gets more damage on the tip of a lot of his normal. Okay, oh, here comes a cold burst from Kudo Geo, and the pressure is on as he's got all this meter to work with. 2K actually going underneath Far Slash there from Happy Chaos. And I love the use of 2K right now from Stealthy. 2K actually able to beat out the clone too with their own RC. YRC to force the turn back, rolling through, putting Stealthy in the corner now, and here comes the gun strings. That's right, Axel players are used to being in the corner. We can fight our way out here. Great throw tech, but gets hit by the far slash counter hit. What a pickup there off of a 5 He gets the wall break with the steady aim shot. Barely any health on him. Kudo Geo can just do this with <laughs> any chip hit. Roll through. Was actually able to block the gunshot there on the roll through, but got caught pressing with a mortal counter there from the 2D. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of situations here where Stealthy has an opportunity but gets punished because the Axel's buttons at that range are just a little bit too slow. And Happy Chaos, way better at that range than you might think at first glance. So another a great game two from Kudo Geo. I mean, the truth is when it comes to zoning and comes to brawling up close, Happy Chaos definitely excels. But luckily, Axel, specifically in this matchup, has the tools to contest that that long range game that Happy Chaos wants to play. Kudo Geo proving, though, that they don't have to rely on the gimmicks for Happy Chaos. They can play that footsies game and that rushdown game with the character incredibly proficiently. Absolutely. Speaking of incredibly proficiently, that was a great round start from Stealthy, but one hit from Kudo Geo and the tables have turned. Okay, gets hit by the spinning. Oh, running under, getting the 2K yet again underneath 6S. I think that's going to be a really important tool for Stealthy in this matchup. Should lean into it just a little bit more. Oh, actually gets the I IBFD. Blocking the mid, getting caught with the back dash, though. Ain't going to convert this. No, just lets, lets it fall into the corner. Wants to keep the pressure up here. Throw tech, that's the second time he's punished with a 6, uh, that 6S. Yeah, the far S, right? Far S, yeah, after that throw tech. Stealthy needs a faster button if he wants to contest that. I don't know if Axel really, besides maybe 5K, will have a button that can actually challenge in that situation. All right, 5P gonna push here into the corner. He's able to actually clip him, gets the full conversion too. Reels in and goes for the side swap. There's the throw as well. Advantage for Stealthy, could have burning the burst. Had to do it in that situation. Stealthy's gotta get in. And counter hit is gonna seal it out. Stealthy finally getting a point on the board pretty decisively in this game as well. Seems like they're finally starting to adapt and figure out how to contest with Happy Chaos in neutral or up close, I should say. The main thing, though, is needs to stop getting hit by Far Slash after those throw tags. Oh, for sure. For sure. When you, you've guessed, it's heartbreaking because you've guessed right with the throw tag, and that's your opportunity to break out of the pressure. You just get hit right back into it. Yeah, there are a lot of situations where you really can't afford to try and challenge Happy Chaos. It's also scary, too, because even if you block it, if you block, decide to block, they're just going to put a gunshot afterwards, and then you have to hold even more pressure. Yeah. And here we go. Speaking of the pressure. All right, Stealthy getting good mileage out of these backwards air dashes to kind of fake out the side switch. And Stealthy is finally starting to utilize Renson a little bit more, too. Great throw there from Kudo Geo. IBFD on point from Stealthy, but Kudo Geo with the jump in, so they, keep, they steal the turn back. Wake up Gold Burst. All right, will Stealthy be able to do something with all this meter using a PRC into an RRC to get a combo into the corner? Kudo Geo bursting. Yeah, Stealthy would have absolutely been able to convert that into probably a 5K into Axel Bomber. So 
Kudogio wanting to stay alive had to burst in that situation. And runs right into a 2H there. Delphi really finding that effective, is spacing that time. It's all a matter of how long can he stay in that perfect zone where he can beat Happy Chaos buttons and Happy Chaos zoning. Oh, there. Kudogio IADing over, rolling. Pushing him into the corner once again with these very tight gun block strings. And that roll was actually a reset, too. <laughs> back Great backdashing, though, with the jump S. Kudogio taking a breather, taking a moment, assessing the situation, trying to find when he can get in. He gets counter hit, though, pressing at the wrong time. Oh, no, a messed up Axel Bomber. That's really tragic. That's all right. Stealthy can still take this. 2K2D is going to do it. Tying this up here. 2-2. Two, two. And Stealthy right. was finally able to break the 3-0 curse. We're going to a game five. Yes, finally. First game five of the night. The two zoners slugging it out. That's what you love to see. See, this, this matchup is exciting to watch with Happy Chaos. When <laughs> Happy Chaos cannot just sit back and play that zoning game, he is such a fun character mm -hmm. to watch. Absolutely. No, he has some really fantastic close range tools. Those close, I'm really loving seeing the uh, the various close range block strings that Kudo Gio has been pulling out. And Kudo immediately bursting, does not want to get that early hit, getting the curse online. But he, look at this, he can't find the opportunity to even pull his gun to take advantage of the curse. He tries to find another one. Stealthy's doing such a great job now harassing him with those five keys from long range. There's the 2H run through this time. Stealthy is on point, is calling out these IADs here from Kudo Gio. We were seeing earlier in the very first two games, Stealthy would go for 2H after 2H, and Kudo Gio would immediately IED over them. Stealthy is starting to recognize that, throwing out one 2H, and then waiting to see what Kudo Gio does. Absolutely. Stealthy feeling like he's kind of got the download here. Two solid anti-airs in a row. He is commanding the pressure in this, what could be the last round of the set. Finally, Kudo Gio getting a throw, putting Stealthy in the corner, waiting out the back dash, punishing with the steady aim. It's the guaranteed curse as well. Another well-placed 2H from Stealthy. Should be able to reel in after this. He's going to go for the explosion into one vision. That is a wall break here for Stealthy. Actually, oh, no, it's not. I really like that, though. What Stealthy was actually doing was just trying to get the rolling tumble to keep Happy Chaos in the corner. That's right, but hey, Happy Chaos is pretty comfy in the corner as he fights his way out with the gun. Another roll. And there we go, a jumping H going to seal the deal here. Stealthy with the reverse 3-0. Yeah. Zato 1 up against Soul Bad Guy. Yes, now we've seen this matchup uh, quite a couple times at some other brackets before. Pretty common to see these guys go at it. And immediately, Mike Saftig with the soul pressure taking two thirds of Masha's life in one. Solid interaction, but Eddie gets behind. Yeah, neither of these players need any introduction, both incredibly strong, proficient experts in these characters. Macho is definitely going to want to try and keep Soul out until they get that one clean hit to run in and try and run that mix-up game, right? Soul generally struggles against zoners. That's kind of his downfall as a rushdown character. But right now, Mike is doing exactly that, rushing down. There's the Tyrant Rave to close out the very first round. Mike playing so efficiently with his interactions. Macho choosing to just hold the burst, saying, go, let's go the next round. <laughs> just a couple interactions was all it took for Mike to establish a dominating lead. And here he goes again. And Mike, right there at the beginning of the round, Macho went for Pierce. Mike immediately answered Pierce with the 5K. So Macho cannot lean on that for pressure. Mike is checking it. Oh yeah, he definitely has the matchup experience. He knows where the gaps are, and he knows when Macho wants to goal burst as he backdashes. Oh, but the break the law to get underneath the burst. What a beautiful confirm from Macho. Gonna break the wall with the sword. Now we're gonna see Pierce here from Eddie. Go throws out the 2S this time to actually catch Mike trying to throw out the 5K to beat out Eddie. And look at how Macho has turned this around. This whole situation, one hit would have done him in, but he stayed, he played tight. Even when Eddie was not on the table, even when there was an, a YRZ, Macho had it. And that's the real-time adaptation, right? We saw that Macho got blown up for trying to utilize Pierce in neutral. Mike immediately answered it with 5K. The very next time that Macho does it, is able to cover the gap there with 2S and gets the kill for it. Macho really on point with the anti-air here, anti-airing. Uh, Mike's attempted approaches. Okay, he gets out of the corner. Here comes, he's getting hit by the second hit of Pierce that time. Slowly, Eddie to the corner. Mike jumping out once again. 
Yeah, Mike didn't want to hold any of that opposed, so I'm just going to escape out of here. Nice recall on Eddie. Make sure that he doesn't get killed by Mike. Chases in the air, RC, that should be enough to kill here with the wall break, but a little too far away to pick up with 2H. Oh, great clash cancel from Macho. He did not give Mike the opportunity to reset that situation, and another 6P on Mike's aerial approach. Macho knows exactly when he wants to come in. Yeah, that very first round was kind of a blow up because Mike took it easily, but then Macho 100% immediately adapted and said, okay, I understand that was a sole bad guy round. Let me play my Zato game plan. Let me lock you down with Pierce. Let me make sure that you're not allowed to play the game, right? Yeah, but he has to have that matchup knowledge to get into the situations where he can take you to the Shadow Realm and do his Eddie mixing. Macho, we can't state enough how solid that neutral play and that adaptive play, the counter play, the anti-airing, so key. Yeah. Anti-airing is incredibly key against Soul because Soul has some really scary air buttons, right? That JS hits so far, just Bandit Bringer will blow you up now that counter hit goes into a full combo. Macho finding an opening playing very safe without Eddie. Oh, actually, not. no, he runs in without Eddie. He actually shows no fear in that situation. Oh, using a pose there to block the gunflame, catches Mike backdashing and baits the burst as well. In his head, he knows exactly what he wants to do, and here you are once again in the corner against Eddie, full Eddie meter. Doesn't have the meter to kill though, just gonna have to break the wall with 2H, but that's all right, positive bonus. The pose again, once again, you are sandwiched, YRC a great option, but Macho knew it was coming and able to punish. Yeah, the problem there is you have to wait for something a little more committal from Zato, right? Like a 5H where you see Zato do something to summon. He is in that situation where it's just Eddie working. Zato's going to block that all day. Counter hit Bandit Bringer a little too far away to get the confirm there. Forces the burst out of Macho anyway. Playing, trying to dodge around Eddie. Eddie is down. This could be Mike's opportunity, but Macho able to get him out in the air. Mike forced to run away even while Eddie is down. What a confirm there! Able to get the whiff punish off of a whiff 2S with 2P immediately RCs. And Macho on fire. Wow, and then he runs up taking the command grab, which of course gives you time to refill Eddie completely taking the round in the next interaction. 2-0 here for Macho so far over Mike. And Mike is one of the best soul players in North America. So yeah. this is crazy, right? I mean, it's not too crazy because Macho is incredibly strong. We haven't seen them entering as many tournaments lately, so it's good to see them back here and doing so well. It's like they just went into the hyperbolic time chamber and hopped right out. Absolutely, that's where Macho was. Macho has been laughing and it's showing impeccable neutral play, solid advantage state, and of course, the Shadow Realm Eddie pressure. Mike has to make an adaptation now if he wants a chance to stay in winner's side. There's that 5P punish, the Zato special. And now you're starting to see Macho. Oh my god, baits the burst again. That's gonna hurt. Rough burst from Mike. And I mean, first, low key, one of the most important resources in this game. Losing it like that so many times in this set makes it really hard to come back. As once again, you're stuck. Oh, actually went for a break the law there. Probably thought Mike had burst. That happens all the time, right? You look up and you just see that the burst is on some side and you immediately instinctively go for the burst bait. Okay, Mike finding a counter hit. Uh oh, drops the cop. Macho able to just 5 keep spam right out of it. Start playing taking, taking Eddie out. Oh, go. That was kind of a crazy reaction as well there. Seeing the just block and immediately going for break the wall to avoid the punish. But what a side swap here. Gonna break the wall with the sword too. Start summoning Eddie once again. Corner pressure. Leap denying the jump out, but Mike's able to get out with another jump. Yeah, beautiful escape there with the super jump straight into Bandit Revolver. Now that is not an overhead. So Mike has been standing up to block that. They don't need to at all. It's just a frame trap move. Yeah, it looks scary. I mean, any time your opponent's feet leave the ground, like, you want to stand up. Nice chance, but again, with the 5 key matching from Macho, burning some meter to continue this pressure in the corner. Not going to find the 5D hit this time. And 6H Stray going to take the round for Mike. One thing you're seeing here from Macho is Macho's really not using Pierce as much anymore. When they're trying to approach, I mean, there's Pierce. But when they're trying to approach normally, they're starting to just draw a drill in neutral. 
I mean, Masha really has to be very mindful of how he approaches with Eddie if he wants to have enough meter to maintain a solid mix even after getting that initial hit. Burning the burst to push Mike back into the corner, opposed Mike getting over Eddie when he leaps pretty consistently at this point. Great punish there with the close slash though. Gonna get a nice little confirm. Drops the combo, but I think that was actually an intentional reset to carry a little bit further towards the corner. Mike finally putting a point on the board here. Yeah, speaking of intentional resets, then there was an intentional reset to get the throw at the end. Finally mixing it up, taking a game. I want to give a shout out to how brave Macho is playing when Eddie is down. Yeah, <laughs> not being passive at all. Just does not want to allow Soul to really press buttons. Doesn't right. want to allow Soul to do anything. And that's a really smart thing to do. You don't want to let the gorilla out of its cage, right? Absolutely. Usually, it, you know, you're used to seeing like, okay, Eddie Meter's down. It's time for me to go in, and then he runs at you. That's a, that's a scary situation. That's like this isn't how this isn't how this is supposed to go whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. But we're gonna see. Mike made some good adaptations there. Can we see another possible reverse 3-0? Two in a row? Maybe. Time will tell. Far slash at round start, the classic. Yeah, just immediately bursting, saying none of that. Give up the <laughs> give up the burst, get the counter hit 60, but breaks the law, no, no conversion out of that. I like the you the the frequent use here of break the law from Macho, trying to bait out these bursts a lot. Oh my god, the summon attempt just gets counter hit with a massive six H going to go through the wall with a tyrant rave. One of the nastiest counter hit buttons in the game. Huge value out of that hit. And this hard knockdown situation. Air dash hits with the low. Macho matching out with the RRC side switching by running under. Really smart move there. He's able to get the close flash as a frame trap. The RC is going to catch the back dash attempt with the 5k. Tragic. Mike. Fighting back really hard right now and looking pretty dominant as well. Yeah, Mike found the exact moment where he could take Eddie out of that situation and turn the tables as he continues his pressure. Yeah, and that wake up burst there. Macho did not want to have to hold that meaty Fafnir. This time he's actually going to throw the Fafnir instead. Counter hit 5H is going to lead into some nice damage here. Break the wall with Amorphous. He's got full Eddie, he's got a hard knockdown, summons for Pierce and runs forward, catching with the overhead 5D, taking this round pretty cleanly for Macho. That's set point now for Macho. Mike's gonna have to really dig deep. Luckily still has burst on their side, tries to go for that far slash yet again at round start. Doing some resummon shenanigans here at full screen, daring Mike to make an approach as he six inches, six inches into the oppose. Yeah, so Macho actually tried to send Eddie behind Mike, but Eddie got hit by the burst. That's all right though, Macho was able to build Eddie back pretty quickly here, gonna get the command grab as well. Mike is on the back foot, wake up DP, that's the equalizer. Oh, yeah, you gotta do it there in that situation. Careful spacing here. Oppose, lead burning a lot of Eddie Meter just to approach it. He gets hit for it. No Eddie here. We are seeing forward getting a hit by so huge counter hit into the corner. Drops the combo. Okay, goes for the fast RC overhead mix. Strike throw game still all strike. And that's all Mike needs to tie this up 2-2. Two, two. We're going to a game five. These are some hot sets this early in the bracket. I mean, this is a stacked bracket, right? Absolutely. So far, we've already seen incredible players on both sides going up against each other, and it's only going to be like that the entire way through. And if you guys want to check out the bracket to see where your favorite player currently is, exclamation point bracket in the chat. Going into game five, Macho versus Mike Saftik. This one, boy. All the marbles in this set. We've seen some huge adaptation from Mike. Can he maintain this pressure once again, getting an immediately round start counter hit? Macho burning burst right off the bat. Yeah, counter hit 6S is not something you want to tank right at the start of a round. Agreed. And he's using the opposed hits to get all the way into the corner himself. Mike burning the burst. Pretty still tied up though in health and resources here. Counter hit 6 H spends the spends the RC to make sure that they can get there. Drops the 2K conversion. If they were actually able to pick up that 2K conversion, that was lights out for Macho. 
Sun Boy to reset Eddie, continuing the pressure, wants to push Mike all the way to the corner. Here comes the sandwich and DPing out of the 6H. No fear this time. And that is because Macho has shown that option too many times, right? You oh, yeah. cannot keep going for 6H with Zato and expect it to keep working. Yeah, got to come up with some new tricks. And I mean, I know you got a lot of them in there, Macho. Let's see it. That's one of the benefits of these long game five sets. Mike has had time to adapt and learn. It's time to switch it up. He's going to break the wall here with Amorphous instead of Sword. Has plenty of Eddie meter left. <laughs> also getting hit by that second hit of Pierce again. Not able to carry it all the way, but just run up and throw. Enough to seal out that round. Yep, and final round now between these two. We're going to see who's going to be sent to losers. Macho, first blood with the 2S. Already has Mike locked down. A fast dust is going to, oh, tries to mate out the burst yet again. Recognizing that Mike built it up just in time, but Mike holds on to it. Even so, Macho breaking the wall with Sunboy, taking this hard knockdown, full Eddie meter, able to continue his pressure all the way again. Air throw right back into the corner. Had the meter actually to finish that off there, but didn't notice it in time. First there from Mike. This is the last attempt they have. Eddie is gone, but about to be back. Mike's got to find a hit. Got to find anything at all if he wants to make this happen. Slowly gun flaming, waiting his turn. Oh, gets clipped by the frog, but the second hit doesn't land. Okay, Eddie is down. Macho does have burst. He's just backing up. He's just waiting, waiting, building Eddie back up. Happy to play this long range game and finally seals it out, running forward with the two S to that, secure the perfect. That's the longest perfect I've ever seen. <laughs> 56 <laughs> seconds left on the clock. Definitely I, one of the top ranked online Happy Chaos players. And let's see, immediately backdashing, not wanting to play against Tester Lux. Round start options, puts a curse on there, jumping out of the ground. So far, Tester Lux doing a great job. Absolutely what you need to do there. Go for the gold burst. Wow, what a scramble. Smitty actually whipping their own gold burst here. Got to get set through the wall. Tester Lux going for the 2S there. Smitty actually trying to contest. That's surprising. You never want to contest the Gory Get round start, but Tester Lux is a picture perfect round of how you need to fight Happy Absolutely. Chaos. Absolutely. That was a high roll round if I ever did see one from Tester Lux, truly living up to his name. And there's the fight. Party time now. Counter hit with the DP. Oh, uh, Smitty might be dead here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Goodbye. Yo, will it kill? The double purple from Test Your Luck, a commanding game one. Say, what matchup? Yeah. What matchup? Smitty didn't get to play the game. No. And that's the matchup, <laughs> Smitty right? Smitty pressed buttons twice. That is exactly the matchup. Nagori V cannot let Happy Chaos play the game. Wow. All right. So we'll have to see if Test Your Luck can maintain that matchup, or will his luck run out? I see what you did there. <laughs> He makes it too easy for me. <laughs> the name, you're, you are right. Test Your Luck's name just adds to a bunch of yeah. easy segues. All right. Immediately denying the jump with the Nago DP. Smitty just blocking this time. I literally just blocking this time. Gets tacked with the 5D, but no. Yeah, the risk wasn't high enough there to make it a moral counter. This time, Smitty is actually able to block the goal burst. Test Your Luck going to spend their YRC, though. They have to keep Happy Chaos locked down. 2K2D, this is Smitty's opportunity to get something going. Look at Test Your Luck's blood. Test Your Luck cannot really do anything here. That's right, his opportunity has been spent. He's got to figure out how can he approach without having any access to his specials. Yeah, and no meter either. No meter at level 3 blood. Oh, there's a Fukio Ford. Hail Mary Fukio Ford actually into the 5H. If that 5H didn't hit, they would have popped blood. That's right, but now here he is once again. Gets knocked in the corner. Still no meter. Has a little bit of buffer room on his blood meter. He can find maybe one opportunity. Gets a clone going for the grab and gets gold bursted and pops. Yeah, the risk that the risk that Tetralok and Nagori have to go through in this matchup is substantial, and that is exactly why. Even when they only had two bars of blood, they just threw out clone, tried to go in for the grab, and was ready to pop. Smitty finding the opportunity to get a 2K, 2D getting out of the corner, knocking all the way to full screen. A quick clone is gonna get a hit. BRC forward to get the counter hit. And Tesselok is using every single movement option that they have available. There's the Blade Blade to get the punish on the far slash 6H. He's going to take that round. Test your luck threatening to go up 2-0 right now. 
Once again, winning this round start situation, taking him all the way to the wall, taking a wall break. No super, but positive bonus on the board for Tester Luck. Smitty desperately trying to take some space. And they're gonna pop blood as well. And you see drops that combo. There's the blood pop, gonna get a nice full confirm here. Oh, he dropped it! Drop Tester Luck was mashing out that super. Absolutely churning. Oh, what a burst there on the 6P attempt. And chips out with the Beyblade. Test your luck, so godlike there. I can't believe Smitty didn't just go for a normal combo. Tried to go for, you know, the fancy 6K combo. Mm -hmm. It had one little gap in it where Test your luck was like, you know what, you hit me, I'm a churn. I'm a churn yeah. and see what happens. And it worked out in the end. He identified, I mean, he was like, maybe there'll be a gap. Maybe there'll be a gap. And there was a gap. He was ready for it. It was the right option in that situation. Absolutely turning the tables, securing the second game. It's just like when you fight Nagoriki players and they're just mashing Potemkin Buster in your block strength. Oh, yeah. My main training buddy is a Potemkin, and oh, he's mashing that every single knockdown. Respect it from other characters as well as we go into what could be. Will test your luck to get the 3-0? Yo goes through the through the gunshot, but gets shot anyway. Going to be sent back full screen here. And this is where Smitty wants to be. Once again, Tester Luck has already burnt a lot of blood. It is getting tagged by the steady aim, chip to death. Not going to be quite enough to kill. Didn't have the meter for the super. Tester Luck weighing his options. Just taking all these bullets to the face. I think he's just saying, GG, go next. Just has to wait we'll for that something. one opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, got close, got yeah. close, but the clone there from Smitty able to help him close that out. Tries to bait out the burst really hard there. Nice fight, party time. Still trying to bait that burst. Smitty is not taking the bait though as he's able to turn the situation around, catching the back dash again. Taking Test Your Luck all the way to the corner. And once again, here we are. Steady aim, steady aim, steady aim. Difference here though is Test Your Luck is only at half a bar of blood. So they still have a chance. BRC forward into Beyblade. They have Smitty on the back, but now, but the gold burst, not like this. Smitty getting so many of these gold bursts, and that just gives him so much value because he can use it to just extend his pressure, although he's opting to just wait, regain focus naturally, and he had plenty of time to do it. Baby, the burst in the air. Test your luck left without any options. Yeah, I mean, in that situation, you are going to get comboed to death. So you know what? Just spend the burst. Right, you don't want to die with burst. That feels yeah. bad. Even if you know, well, I'm gonna die anyway. Let's just press burst. Well See what happens. Just do it, just right? do it to do it. What what if you are actually able to burst through the gun and then you fall and then you get a chance, right? There's always a chance. Yeah, but it just didn't pan out for him that time. Smitty getting a game on the board. One to two. Test your luck, just needs to find one more. And as we saw, I mean we saw that explosive game one. We haven't seen a situation quite that one sided since then, but we know that it is on the table. All he needs is one good opportunity. Mankind yes, Smitty is starting to play a lot better here. Tester Luck is winning a lot of these round star interactions, though, which is not good for Smitty. Yet again, Tester Luck able to win it. They're trying to bait out the burst really hard, though, which makes sense. You have to get that burst out of Happy Chaos so that you can keep that pressure on them and run that train over them. Smitty's got his finger on the trigger for that gold burst, and he is burning everything, just maintaining this full screen pressure, forcing Tester Luck into the same situation once again. How do you approach? Oh, actually shoots him in the start of a clone there. Reloading these bullets. This is such a difficult place for Test Your Luck to be in. Yep, there's the gunshot. Clone up against clone. Save Smitty. Tough situation. He really needs to win these early interactions. Okay, he gets a hit here. He's able to take it all the way to the wall break. Take this positive bonus. A nice 60% damage combo as well on one confirm. But even so, breaking without super still just puts you right back in a neutral situation and you have to do your approach all over again. He does have a lot of meter and plenty of blood room. He just has to identify the opening. BRC Beyblade forward. Yeah, you're gonna see that a lot too, BRC Beyblade forward. But what a Fukio forward as well. The RC drops the 6K though. That was Test Your Luck's chance. He has to okay. find one more hit and he does. Looks like he might have caught Smitty attempting to backdash or jump there. All right, doing a quick little you know, slash into grab, forcing Smitty into the corner once again. All the blood in Tester Luck's favor. Plenty of pressure, normal grab. 
Alright, PRC tries to go for the fight, but Smitty has been so on point with these gold bursts. It's kind of insane. Yeah, Tetra Luck is trying really hard, really hard to bait the out. Smitty is still finding the opportunity to get all of that meter and just put Tetra Luck in this painful situation. Bang, bang, there we bang. go. Deus Ex Machina is going to tie this up 2 2. We could be seeing a reverse 3 0 here from Smitty. Another game five. We're only in pools. <laughs> We're only in pools and we're getting these crazy high level matches. That's just the kind of sack bracket that you get here at DreamHack Beyond. Yep, $400 on the line in the pot. So these players are trying to get out here and earn just a little bit of money, right? Whoever wins treats us all to dinner. I, I, oh, is that the deal? <laughs> I'll take it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the deal. Whoever wins, you got it. I'm, all right, my I'll give you my Venmo, I'll give you my Cash <laughs> App, I'll get a burger. What? Now we're going to steak. <laughs> All right, actually, Smitty trying to contest there with 2D. Gonna get shot. Happy Chaos team playing. Smitty feeling the power as he just lets this relentless steady aim zoning game rip. It is true that if your own theme is playing, that is about a 10% power up for your character. Here we go, just going for these gun combos. Are we gonna see a Deus Ex Machina? No, instead, tries to go, instead goes for the guaranteed curse there. And there's the super focus, and Tetsuo is kind of in a checkpoint situation. Yeah, just those instant reloads. Smitty so on point with his execution. These pressure strings are just nearly gapless. Now, that doesn't seem too fair. You saw the burst there from Test Your Luck, and the curse went through Test Your Luck's body with the burst. They still ended up cursed. That's so strange, but you know what? Happy Chaos, he's got that DLC privilege. He's keeping the pressure up once again. Here's the focus super, maintaining the resources. Nagaru, he's got to find an end. This is his final chance, or he's going to get steady aim to death. And that's one more. It. Oh no, yeah, okay, this is definitely checkmate. There's nothing that Tetra can do. Gonna get chipped out as well. Is yep. what I, okay. He tried to find the <laughs> tried to find the grab, a desperate attempt. I was gonna pop off there for a second. <laughs> But Smitty, Smitty Waverman Jensen moving forward and proving that they are number one right now in this matchup. It took Nagaruyuki 10 years to find the answer to the Happy Chaos matchup. And Happy Chaos online. Don't know if that's still true at the moment, but last time I checked, they were incredibly solid player here. But right now, Macho trying to lock down Happy Chaos, not allowing them to get started at all. And Macho's been on a tear so far tonight. Yeah, I'm so excited to see this matchup. I love what we saw from Macho earlier, and I feel like if anyone is going to be able to take down the Tyrant, that is Umi Show. It could be Macho. We'll have to see as we show here begins this mid screen. Look at these incredibly tight lock screen super to continue the pressure and throwing. Doing throw after super focus there is actually really interesting because most of the time, once people see super focus, they know how plus it actually is, so they're definitely going to expect that close slash, right? Or a 6K. I like going for that throw option, but right now, Macho turning this a completely around, draining out the SD from Umi Show. This defense from Umi Show, impeccable, finally. Finally getting hit by something, but blocking against yeah. that horrifying mix for so long. The problem is, once you run out of meter, there's nothing you can do, right? You're out of meter, and Zato's just going to chip you out like that. Here we go again. Macho with the Shadow Realm. Eddie pressure tagging with a 5D. Does not have enough Eddie meter to continue this into, into the wall splat, but honestly, in this situation, maybe you don't want the wall splat. You want to continue this corner pressure. Ubi Show is finally finding a way to escape there. Goes for the bunny hop, able to actually get over. Super focus. And okay, gets the counter hit. Full conversion, but doesn't have the meter for the kill. Tries to bait out the burst. It does. Yeah, it's a gold burst there. Drills are gonna do it. Macho going up 1-0 here over Umi Show. All right, that was a very commanding game one from Macho versus Umi Show, who is, like you said, one of the top ranked in the tower, one of the top players in online tournaments, very consistently an absolute powerhouse, a terror to behold. And here we saw them just go down in the first game to, uh, with uh, two rounds. You know, I feel Macho's kind of given off main character energy tonight, right? <laughs> macho, Macho, man. <laughs> Part of the Yaru crew. <laughs> yeah, let's see if Macho is keep this triumphant return going. So Macho taking a second to rejoin on the platform there. Gonna hop back on it with their swordfish. 
So what can Umisho do here, right? Umisho is going to have to be able to escape Zato. That's one of the things that we talked about with Axel is that Axel has the ability to shut down Happy Chaos when they're trying to zone out from far away. That's something that Little Eddie can do too if the if the Zato player is playing the matchup well enough, and Macho is doing it, forcing Umisho to play more of a close range style. Yeah, but this time the rounds start going fantastically for Umisho as he's able to get a wall break combo, has positive bonus and a lot of meter, and this is it immediately answering with not quite a perfect, but pretty darn close. Sorry, I had something in my eye. What happened? <laughs> I, <laughs> you looked away for one second, and Umito took a commanding round. Oh, Trading. 2D trade, okay. Trying to catch you with the pierce there. And here we go, time for the classic Happy Chaos gameplay. Puts on that curse. Oh, tries to run in, actually. So trying to find an approach here, knowing that if he commits to summoning Eddie at the wrong time, he will get shot. But here we are in the corner. Huge pressure. You know, Zato and Happy Chaos have very similar pressure when you're in the corner. Both of them can convert into huge strings off of just about anything. Crazy defense here from Umisho as well. Able to clip Macho with the 6S back into the zoning game. Super focused with the steady aim. Such clean dash blocking from Macho, but it's even with that, it's so hard to get in. He goes in for a 2P on the clone and gets hit. Only one opportunity here to get close enough, and no, he gets hit by the gun on his approach. 1-1, one, one, tying up the set. Good stuff here from Umisho. Already putting in so much work. But now we're going to see Macho still playing incredibly well there. Umisho was able to turn around, get that zoning game going, shutting down Macho. But you saw when Macho was getting those hits, they were making them count, converting them. Yeah, both players with fantastic. All right, we're going to have to see only both these players just have to win two more games here to get into top eight. This is a top eight qualifying match. Umisho with the early first blood, already putting Macho into the corner. 5D to stop him from jumping out. And Macho finds the opportunity to tech and gets the counter hit, turns the situation around with the damned Fang. Fully restarting Eddie and continuing his pressure. He's going to be pushing Umisho all the way to the corner. No, gives him an opportunity and gets the hit. All right, there's the 5D. Huge juggle. I love to see that. Opt to not take the wall flat. Tries to get a little bit greedy there. Burning burst to keep the pressure. Oh, actually gets the 2H, but didn't believe in it to commit into a conversion there. It's going to get the run-up command throw. Should be enough to kill. Absolutely. And even if it wasn't, Umisho did have, or excuse me, never mind, I was looking at the wrong meter. Oh yeah, Macho. Macho did have enough, enough meter to actually convert there. Macho's kind of faked that oppose into Dan Fang mix a couple times, but that time he went for it for real after Umisho was, I guess, expecting him to go for the 2H again. Yeah, Umisho just running halfway across screen there to get the throw on Macho. Right, Macho with the cross up here comes once again. Eddie pressure in the corner. Recall just in time to build it enough and to bait the first. Gets the hard knockdown there, too, as well. Whips the throw, but Umisho actually doesn't have any answer for that. Here we go. One little hit converting all the way, all the way to the corner, and curse on the table. So this counted. is going to train. No, nope. actually, he canceled. He didn't go for the gunshot. Beautiful stuff. Or they didn't go for the gunshot. Beautiful stuff there from Umisho. That solid trigger discipline is what that is. <laughs> But you only put your finger on the trigger when you know you're going to shoot, right? Only aim that gun at something you <laughs> intend to destroy. And right now it is Macho as we go down into one round apiece this game. All right, trade there. That's definitely going to be in Umisho's favor. Able to land the curse and get this zoning game going yet again. Yeah, Umisho happy to just take space this time. No more close range shenanigans as he just continues to retreat with Clone, forcing Macho to approach and get his tag with steady aim. So much damage. All right, yeah, Macho is having such a difficult time trying to approach right now. Umisho, they're just zoning them out so crazy, even though their back is up against the wall. Catches them trying to summon Eddie there, and that's going to be 2-1 right now for Umisho. Only needs one more game to get into top eight. Yeah, definitely a risky play from Macho. Raw Eddie summon mid-screen, very punishable. Yeah. I said this looks fun. It It is a difficult thing to deal with, especially for a character that doesn't have a ton of mobility like Zato, right? Zato's one of the more slow characters in the game. They definitely don't have the best 
Well, they've got decent air mobility when it comes to the directions that they can move in the air, but when it comes to their speed in the air, definitely one of the slowest characters. Right, and as we've seen a lot, it's very dangerous to be in the air against Happy Chaos because if he tags you, even if you block, you just lose a lot of ground, and that's advantageous for him. Although here, immediately, Movie Show changing it up, playing a solid close range aim with the strike throw. It's starting to work out so far, too. I like this because if you're able to stop Macho from even getting the chance to summon Eddie, you are winning the matchup. Zato suffers from not having a really strong defense. Zato's main defense is 2P, right? 2P and 5P. Counter hit, gun pull, gonna seal that out. This is one of Umisho's strongest aspects. He is able to flip between the most terrifying zoner you have ever seen and a solid Geo level strike throw at the drop of a hat. Here we go, pushing into the... Oh, we lost signal for just one second. Give us a second, buddy. It sounds like the match is proceeding. Pretty. I do hear gunshots in the background, though. We've got a Deus Ex Machina. Positive bonus on deck, wall break. Here we go, playing this neutral game. There's the burst as well. All right, super focused, getting the gunshots going. And just chipped to death once again. You know, it, that game one from Macho was very impressive, but Umisho taking it back. Players can grind to a level never seen before. Starting off here, Blue Hat getting the 6S to push K7 back. K7 immediately, once they're pushed back, leaning into that fireball game, right? Leo's fireball kind of works as an anti-fireball. The durability on it is so strong that it's going to blow through all of Kai's stun edges. Right. Slowly approaching PRC. Gotta block that. Takes the H DP. Gets his little mix-up situation right here. Crosses up, avoiding the DP into a fat punish into the wall. Has a hundred meter to him. Yep, there we go. Oh, it doesn't kill? Not quite. What? Not quite, but he still has 50 meter. He can do anything he wants, and he just goes for a, okay. <laughs> for a quick Okay, unironically, yes, yeah, send that one to Say Jam. I can't believe that didn't kill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Blue Heck backing up. Solid 6P anti air. Taking this opportunity, punishing the back dash, getting a shock state combo into the corner. Yeah, that's going to force the burst there. K7 show off too, but they get a great run through, able to swap sides. 2S is going to counter hit. Basketball combos here in the corner with the wall break. Axe kick is going to send them through. K7. And through the wall, the wall wall. <laughs> the literal wall of the White House. K7 abusing the plus frames on those slow buttons. I forgot how cool the wall breaks are on the stage. Such a good stage. I love the DLC in this game. <laughs> and the heavy fireball cross-up PRC is going to seal out the first round. Yeah, first going game. to K7 show off here. Incredibly solid Leo player. Not even incredibly solid. Kind of a godlike Leo player, yeah. right? <laughs> kind of one, one of the best, if not the best. Right? Like he's, he's quite up there. Definitely up there. Like when you think of Leo players here in Guilty Gear Strive, the first two names that come to mind are people like Razo and K7. But we're going to see what Blue Heck can do here. I think definitely maybe kind of not relying on your fireballs, right? This is not a matchup that Kai can reliably use fireballs as a poking tool. Heavy stun edge on Oki is perfectly fine. That's good in any situation there. Oh, and is actually able to give a 6P on the punish attempt there from K7, speaking of heavy stun edge. Yeah, I got to have that careful spacing from Blue Heck having just enough space to get punishes afterwards. Trading and getting the grab into back turn and goes immediately for the overhead all the way into a super wall break. Gonna send them yet again through another wall. Here we go into the actual oval office here. Safe mid pressure, tick throw, quick RC to seal it out. And K7 just putting in short work right now with Blue Heck. They're not able to really get anything going here in neutral, utilizing those SD breaks. But oh my god, the response there with the follow up to guard stance is gonna get that mortal counter. Throw after throw in the corner. Oh, goes for, goes for the com the back turn command grab and finally getting GP'd out of it. Blue Heck's strike throw has been really powerful, but tries to PRC the whip and gets swept. Heavy stun edge, Oki. Has to PRC forward after that. Blue Heck's opportunity. He's got Shock State in the corner. K7 is trying to find the escape. Careful spacing from Blue Heck is keeping this advantage. 6K there, just playing a little patiently. Knows they just need one more confirm. About to build up 50 meter as well. 
Oh, there's the stun edge. No burst on deck. Builds just up just in time. Just enough. He burns it just for a desperate attempt, and it could be enough. No, he doesn't confirm through that counter hit, giving Wuhek the opportunity to take the round back. Yeah, K7 was trying to bait out that burst way too hard there. In those kind of situations, sometimes you just got to go for it. Take every opportunity you can get. This is so interesting because Blue Heck has the advantage as long as they are in this mid range. At long range and close range, K7's Leo has the advantage. Plus frames on that. Gets a hit but not able to convert into anything. Just getting these back turn S's. Blades the first this time. And we're going to send them through the wall, leaving the office room here. He says goodbye, sealing out second game for K7. Dude, the wall breaks on that stage are so sick. I'm, I still can't get over them. But yeah, K7 2-0 up right now. Really, like, it's difficult for Blue Heck because they're not they're not getting the hits that they need and the conversions that they need in neutral, right? And K7 is putting them into that Leo blender over and over and over, just playing this matchup so perfectly. Absolutely. Yeah, we saw in one round, Blue Heck really had the spacing of Locke being at just the tippy top of that sword range. Let's see if we can maintain that so far. Looking decent in neutral here. Taking the opportunity for the heavy stun but he DPs right through it. All right, defense. And this is what we're talking about here. Blue Heck is getting hit by a lot of counter hit 2S, right? Trying to challenge against Leo when it's not their turn and getting blown up for it. YRC to get rid of that back turn. Solid option. Even so, KF's, uh, K7's strike throw game is disgusting today. Yep, gonna break through the wall here. Go into the meeting room yet again. Carefully, IAD, he PRCs just in time to 6P punish. Almost a great approach from Blue Heck, but fantastic meter usage from K7. Yeah, that's the thing about Fireball characters. When they have meter on deck, you need to be really careful about those IED approaches, right? They can always just immediately RC and punish you for it. Trying to stick out that 6P. Great stun edge there. Goes for the fast RC to make sure they get as much damage as possible. Air throwing the punish, knowing that K7 wanted to jump back, but he gets, again, an HPP into the 50-50 situation. Goes low, goes cross up, gets the hit. Yeah, in this matchup specifically, you need to be very on point about your spacing when you throw that heavy stun edge because Leo can just DP right through it. Loving these back turn cancels from K7 to mix up Leo's already impressive mix. All right, nice toss there, 6H. I love the back dash, the, the back, back dash, dash. JS there. Blue Heck keeping themselves alive. Huge rain from Blue Heck. Counter hit immediately bursting. And that right. should be it for burst when it comes to Blue Heck. It's gonna take a while for burst to build back up here. He's gonna opt for the double low and the knee oh my overhead God. twice. OTG goes for a third one. Finally, Blue Heck finds an opening. Throw tech back in the corner. And K7 actually didn't go for the wall break combo there because they wanted to keep Blue Heck locked down. That might come back to haunt them though now. Blue Heck trying to bait out the DP. Wants to be in whiff range, knowing that Leo had all of that meter on deck, but it didn't matter. K7 with the RRC to take this all the way. Yeah, gonna get the wall break. Wall break damage is going to do it. Goodbye, sends it to the other side of the White House field. That is 3-0 from K7 show off. <laughs> Real, truly showing off with a powerful 3-0 to, to end out our pools. Oh, not, not quite end out our pools. We have no, one more pools match. One Sorry, more pools play. match to decide who's going to go to top eight. Smitty FGC versus Duel Stealthy. Let's Immediately with the micro dash up 2k. Yeah, see the dash up 5 feet. Unfortunately, it traded there with Smitty. So Smitty was able to get that zoning game going. Again, you need to be careful with those Rensons. Those Rensons have a little bit too much recovery. If it gets blocked, it's going to allow Happy Chaos to get started. We see Stealthy throwing out some buttons, trying to find an opening, but the space just isn't quite there. And Smitty continues the relentless gun pressure focus. Super giving him so much meter to work with. Steady aiming him to death. Okay, the backwards walk there, trying to get out of 2S range. Wasn't able to get the punish. He's actually going to go for the same side mix up here. Over the curse, goes for the spin. 
shot out once again. Smitty perfectly happy to hang out in the corner. It's where he likes to be. Nice 5 p place for there too. Gets the tipper as well. Look how much damage that does. When the 5 p hits just on the tip, it has a significant chunk more damage than when you hit it up close. Once again, Smitty just slowly inching forward with the gun. Stealthy trying to find an opening. Really struggling here. Finally gets a counter hit. Gonna reel in as well. Goes for the cross up of the burst. Comes out there from Smitty. Nice 5 p placement. Great just block too. So when you jump in the air, you have to just block the bullet or you are getting sent back. Is able to clip Smitty with the JH as well after the RC. Stealthy still in this. Yes, a surprise double overhead from Axel enough to seal that out. Let's see this adaptation continue. Stealthy once again getting hit out of his approach. So punishing. Yeah, and that's because 2H has a little bit of a uh, little bit of extended startup, right? So five frames is how long it takes between Happy Chaos pressing Heavy Slash and the bullet actually hitting you. No matter where you are on screen, you need to keep that in mind when you're trying to challenge with your buttons. But Smitty going to take game one here over Stealthy. Stealthy, of course, having his burst in, the, in his pocket. But when do you get the opportunity to use it when you're being zoned at full screen? Yeah, sure as hell not then. <laughs> Really just slowly, Smitty taking away all of Stealthy's options, forcing him into, yet again, that steady aim, checkmate situation. But still, Stealthy able to take that one round. We definitely see that he has it in him. Yeah, Smitty's, uh, Stealthy is just gonna have to stay at that perfect range, right? Like the 5P range, the far slash range, something where he can brawl with Happy Chaos just like that. Forces the burst out of him there. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to bait it out. Now has to hold this zoning pressure. A little bit of trouble with the dash blocking here as he just continues to get clipped. These aren't counter hits. He's just not blocking in time on the approach. That's a counter hit. Full steady aim and oh, the recurse misses. And you see what happens is Stealthy is winning with those five Ds, but then tries to go into something with a little more startup like 2H and just gets blown all the way back to full screen. Stealthy needs to lean just like just keep harassing Happy Chaos with 5P until they do something different. Yeah, Smitty playing so optimal with these tight strings, not giving Stealthy the opportunity to get anything done. But once again, that fake cross-up getting some work done. Just trying to inch their way in. Yep, you have to dash and block. Dash and block. That's the only way to deal with this zoning. Oh, <laughs> getting tipped to death once again. You get clipped by the tiniest little bullet and you are sent all the way to the corner. Stealthy, what does he do? And this 2H is not working out. It's just not getting across the screen fast enough here to work out for Stealthy. Smitty going to go up 2-0 right now, threatening to take this with one more game. And I feel like that's really the main change we need to see from Stealthy is not as much 2H. They're getting blown up for trying to throw out these 2Hs. Lean into Axel's faster buttons because Either the 2H doesn't get there in time, or in the middle of your startup, you're just getting shot in the face. Agreed. He's got to pick something faster, but I mean, Smitty is not giving him any openings. Smitty is not really taking to the air to give Stealthy the opportunity to hit, hit him with the anti-air, like the 5P, the 2P. He's just slowly playing patient and safe. He knows exactly where he wants to be, knows exactly where his power resides. Far slash there at round start. Unfortunately, we're just a little too far away that time for the 5P to hit and get shot for it. And that's why spacing is so incredibly important in this matchup. So here we go. We've seen this again. Trying to find the opportunity to dash block in as Smitty uses the focus super, has plenty of resources, and just finds the little clip. The dash blocks are just a little bit too late. And the thing is, is Stealthy is just getting, getting just too far away. I mean, like a pixel away for that 5P to hit. What a tease, Smitty. What a tease. <laughs> There's the okay. burst, though. Now has Happy Chaos in the corner. This is Stealthy's chance to get something going, but unfortunately gets shot just too far away. It's the spacing issue here right now, right? Is Stealthy is not spacing these buttons correctly, whether it be the 5P or the 2K. They're whipping them right in front of Happy Chaos and getting shot for it. That's right. They're going for the spin follow-up there and missing it entirely really just kind of cost him his offensive opportunity. Smitty able to seal that out 3-0. But we're going to be jumping into our very first match of top eight winner side here. Umi Show up against K7 Show Off. Now here's the thing. This character, Leo, struggles against zoners. 
So this Happy Chaos matchup is going to be pretty difficult, but A7 Show Off doesn't seem to care about the matchup. It's just going to go ahead and put Umi Show through the wall. Yeah, I mean, maybe Leo struggles against Zoner, but right now it's not looking like Show Off struggles. Although, ooh, he does burst that at a poor distance, giving Umi Show the opportunity to get all the way to full screen again. Still 100 meter on K7. He's got a lot to play with, and he can just find the opportunity. Nice confirm here. We should possibly see a wall break with Deus Ex Machina. There you go. That's going to refill all six of Happy Chaos's bullets. Gets the hard knockdown, which means we're going to see a guaranteed curse set up as well. Actually, okay, was low on focus, so decided to go for the focus instead. Looks like he already had the curse. Oh, man, K7 tying with all of that meter. Burns half of it, but not able to get anything started. Okay, that trade going to be in K7 show -off's favor. Usually when you trade with an opponent who's in the air, it is always the grounded opponent's favor there. But a nice 2S counter hit is going to allow Umi Show to carry K7 show -off all the way to the corner. Gotta admit, these corner carry combos are pretty sick to watch. Putting the cologne right in his face, keeping him in the corner, getting hit with the fireball PRC. Yeah, that placement of the fireball so well and following up behind it there with the RC. K7 still in this with the super focus. Back to square one. Square one? Square one? <laughs> Gotta find an opening playing safe, but he only has a little bit of meter. He's gonna, he can get chipped out. He has no option. Yeah, there's no meter left. It's over. There it is. We saw him take a dash forward to try to get just enough meter for one final FD, but it was not enough because he didn't. He had more than one final bullet. Happy cast at Cheku Meito. Game one going to Umi Show. I mean, Umi Show showing why they're one of the best Happy Chaos players in all of North America, right? On this winner's side, top eight, just putting in the work on K7. Yeah, more like K7 Umi Show off. Shut up. I, I gotta stop. <laughs> I gotta leave. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm, I'm going. Goodbye. <laughs> Here we go. Jumping straight into our next game. Duel one. Let's rock. Round start. K7 going for a little, what seemed to be a safe option. Umi Show gets a quick 2K, taking all the way to the corner immediately. Not a situation you want to be in. Yeah, and Umi Show actually just holding forward at that round start too there. K7 able to move forward with the 5K. is going to get a confirm here. I like that. Don't go for the wall break, but what a back dash from Umi Show on the axe kick attempt. Still has 100 meter on deck, but this is a nice confirm here. Forced to break the wall, which is unfortunate. You're going to go back to mid-screen with a 100 bar. Happy chaos. Oh, and finding the counter hit there as well, too. As somehow side switching, what a bizarre bounce. Going to wall break again with the Deus Ex Machina taking this hard knockdown opportunity. Like making a guaranteed curse, but hey, 100 meter to K7. Can he do anything with this? It's going to be difficult here because 50 meter is already on Umi Show's side as well. Nice PRC back where it's going to RC to make sure you can continue the pressure after the hit. Nice kick throw there. K7 finally, yeah, putting around on the board. Nice mix up from him, but okay, <laughs> Umi Show just finding one tiny opportunity and any little hit takes you all the way to the corner and a wall break. This dude has XR combos. Yeah, with a quick 50% damage as well, that positive bonus. Look, Happy Chaos already builds a lot of meter as it is. Positive bonus, you saw what? Three blocked moves there from K7, 100 meter for Umi Show. Rest in peace, perfect for Umi Show. Hey, okay, Umi Show really dominating these round starts so far as Team 7 consistently chooses defensive or retreating options. And not only that, Umi Show is winning them with really quick buttons, utilizing 2K or 5K, right? Just to get K7 on the back foot there. There's the 2S counter hit, not able to get quite a confirm off of it, even with the super focus. Once again, here we are, wall break. Huge advantage for Umi Show, going aggressively with the 5k, K7 ready to punish, finally getting some pressure started. First is on the board for Umi Show, but he doesn't have the opportunity to spend it before hitting the wall. Yep, and this is a tragic situation too as well. K7 gets the gold burst, PRC forward with the fireball, not going to be tragic. Oh no, they dropped the conversion after the 5d! Heartbreaking for K7, he definitely could have had that round, but the Light miss input is just enough as Umi Show takes season inch and takes a mile once again. Yeah, so K7 was definitely trying to go for uh, dust.
FastRC 2H to get the full confirm. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe Umisho got caught backdashing, so the dust confirm was a little strange and sent Umisho into a tumble state instead. It was definitely a bizarre situation there, but that was 100% K7 show offs round. Well, not anymore as he turns a win into a loss, and now K7 has an uphill battle to try and reverse 3 0. Oh, the absolute Two bracket one. demon Umi show. Yeah, they are putting in the work right now. Starting off this time instead with Curse, wants to get it going early. Shout out to these fearless button mashes from Umisho. He knows exactly where he can afford to press against Leo, although now here he is in the corner. Finds his out, uses the Goomba Stomp to get out, but he does get punished. And it says, you mind if I skate the corner using your head? <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo the Mario. All right, once again, K7 doing this staggered pressure, and Umisho with incredibly clean defense. All right, chasing down with the 5K is actually going to get the fancy dust combo here. Breaks the wall and takes the round. K7, let's go. That was a spicy hot combo. That was flaming hot Mountain Dew right there. I love to see it. And I like that K7 is also utilizing 5K and 2D, buttons that all move Leo forward to try and catch Happy Chaos. Counter hit, far slash there. Yeah, these long range counter hits are very key as he tries to find that perfect spacing where he can get some work done. Whoa, the cross up whip, but he's able to continue it. Gets another hit, dealing out this game, K7 on the board. Yeah, it's starting to really adapt well here. Knows the matchup, just has to get to that knockdown and get in, right? Leo's. Leo's pressure is so oppressive that there's not too much that Umisho can actually do, specifically in the mid-screen. Umisho is doing a wonderful job escaping from the corner, but when K7 puts Umisho on his back mid-screen and starts running that mix, that's where he's winning. Absolutely. We're also seeing really great spacing from K7 with those far slashes, getting two or three really huge counter hits with those far slashes in the last round, really key for his victory there. Dashing over the curse. Oh no, he still got cursed. It curses the tip of his foot. And now he's on the back foot as he gets once again gun chips. Yeah, the hitbox on curse is absolutely ridiculous, but K7 doing a great job approaching with that 5k as well. Let me show back up against the wall. This time, not going to drop that combo. Gets the overhead too, breaks the wall with the pillar. Huge advantage for K7, fakes the jump D, but hits the clone with it that time, has to burst and kills with the fireball. Yeah, even though K7 had such a substantial life lane, you have to spend the burst in a situation like that because you do not want to allow Umisho or Happy Chaos to get their foot in the door at all. Just playing nice and safe behind the clone. K7 trying to run over it. Careful spacing for Umisho, denying K7's approach. And Umisho is also not only going for these steady aim shots, but sprinkling in a lot of normal gunshots as well to try and catch K7's micro dash forwards. Powder hit 2S into a full combo here. No meter for the break, but still positive bonus for Happy Chaos and quite a substantial likely. The 5K, he could convert that into a full combo as well. All right, Umisho threatening set point. Give him a little toe tap afterwards too. That's all he needs. A little disrespect, huh? 5K into tick throw. All right, 2K, 2D. Here's the confirm with the 6S as well. Gonna break the wall. Scary how quickly these combos wall splash. Okay, cross up, back turn stance. This is an opportunity for K7. Careful defense from Umisho. I love the staggered pressure. Unfortunately, the burst gets faded. And that was beautiful there. Umisho with the perfectly placed SD to push K7 out far enough so the two S whips. Once again, taking it all the way to the corner. Deus Ex Machina to break. This could be the set for K7. Yeah, this is probably checkpoint here. There it is, Boomy Show going up 3-1 over K7. One step closer to that $400 prize pool at the end of top eight. Oh, he wants it and it shows. Impressive play from Boomy Show, one of the most skilled pilots of Happy Chaos that I have ever seen to date. Battle of the bare feet, let's go. <laughs> You had to go there. I had have to, go to. Yes, of course I have to go there. Winner gets my OnlyFans sub. Come on, Ram. Come on, Happy Chaos. Let's do it. Ram Lord. Versus Chaos. Duel 1. 
All right, let's rock. Okay, immediately Solst is actually going for the back dash around start. They're gonna win the win the first blood war here, putting Smitty in the corner. But that was actually a surprising move. Great knowledge from Solstice because you want to get into that range where they can contest with those heavy slashes. And he's going to carry this combo all the way into the corner with the wall break. Mortobato taking this opportunity to continue once again. Smitty looking pretty locked down. Air throw to deny the jump out. Did Smitty press a button? <laughs> he pressed actually, back. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if Smitty pressed an actual button that entire round, but Solstice starting off really strong. But here we go, Smitty with the counter hit far slash. Thank God that gun crosses up, right? Yeah, just shot behind the shoulder. So sick. All right, here we are where Smitty wants to be. Notice how Smitty runs in to deny Ram the opportunity to fight at range with those big swords that she loves so much. Bouncing between full screen and close range very quickly. And Ram moving so fast. Look at that run speed, covering so much ground. And she doesn't even need to cover that much actually going against Happy Kale. She just needs to get within 5H range. Tries to go for the Daru there, but just gets blown up for it. Dave's like Machina, this is absolutely going to kill. Smitty evening it up. I mean, very clean play from Solstice, but I, it only takes one, one solid opportunity for Smitty to put you in that situation you don't want to be in once again. Carefully approaching, jump P's, denying the approach, forcing Smitty back into the corner. Again, jump P's, denying the jump out. Yeah, that is basically like the jail button, right? You see a lot of Rams spam that, especially on block all the way down. Great 6P placement there. Actually doesn't spend their meter. Is it opting to, to just spend it there, but getting YRC, dropping the hey, a counter hit, finally. Again, that huge range of the sword coming in the clutch. Solstice taking the first game. Yeah, it's gonna make Smitty have to really think more about their spacing because they can't afford to pull out the gun when they're in range of Heavy Slash, right? And Heavy Slash goes so far, it's terrifying to deal with. Anything Ram does is terrifying to deal with. And then when you're playing a character like Happy Chaos, who really has no defense, once you get put into the corner and you get swords dropped on top of you, you just gotta hold back down and pray. Pray oh. for an opening. Oh yeah, I mean, everyone hates to be in the corner against Ram pressure, but it is especially hard for Happy Chaos, who does not have a reversal, even if he has 50 meter. If he has no burst, he is in a very tight spot, stuck between a sword and another sword. But if you guys want to learn how to have really solid defense in this game, pick up Happy Chaos, because you're forced to learn or perish. <laughs> Into game two. This time, Solstice with the dash block starter again, getting into that perfect counter hit range to begin their corner pressure, denying the jump outs again. It really feels like they've got Smitty's defensive habits on lock. Yeah, and not doing anything really committal either, so it's hard for Smitty to find that opening. The risk gauge is starting to build up here. Next hit is going to be a mortal counter. There it is on the 2K. Massive wall bounce, no meter for the super wall break. So Smitty does have one last chance in this round. Option to clone, and she just double swipes. Yep, far slash, heavy slash, why not do it? One for the clone, one for you. Nice counter hit 2S though, gonna get a good little confirm here. Nearly 50% damage back into this zoning game, but you have to stop Ram from getting in that heavy slash range. And Solstice is doing such a good job too, utilizing 5k to just shut down the clones the moment that they come out. Also making great use of Ram's very good mobility and movement speed on the ground combined with her new sword range. Look at this clean defense, nice and patient. Knowing exactly when they can dash block. No dash block miss inputs here so far as they are placing safe place. They for getting counter hit though. Oh, that's so rough. Mini trying to tie this up 1-1 one, one here. Round start situation is so important. That is why we saw Solstice go for the micro step backwards at round start. Was looking to force Smitty to whip far slash or 2S to get that punish. Here we are again. Solstice playing calm, playing patient, taking these, countering with the laser super for the <laughs> no, she gets shot out of it. It has no invincibility on startup, uh -huh. so. It was a nice try, but just a little bit this time. And Ram is out of meter here. The chip is going to add up. Oh, she's starting to build just a little bit back. Nice jumping S. Boy, Smitty into the corner. Smitty playing nice and safe. Does not even feel the need to block with FD, but they get hit. Super. There it is. Mortabo. Solstice going up 2-0 here over Smitty on our winner's side.
Yeah, Smitty just kind of let their guard down a little bit, looking a little too comfortable on defense in the corner there. Uh, they just dropped it for one second, and that was all that Solstice needed to push it all the way to another victory. <laughs> Solstice's message is, you should have 6P'd. <laughs> I mean, just 6P it, bro. <laughs> yeah, just 6P the sword. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, just punch the sword. <laughs> Pretty easy. But all right, Smitty's got to dig deep to bring this back. I mean, they're playing strong, but they cannot keep Solstice out. Ram does so well in this matchup, just being able to throw her swords, and with her range and speed, it's kind of daunting. Gets caught back, dashing there with the sword, and it's already in the corner. Here comes the strike throw again. Corner pressure, Smitty rolling out, taking the corner in turn, but Solstice <laughs> with the aggressive flip jump, pushing all the way back. Once again to the left corner, here we are, sword pressure again. Yeah, this is, this is the life of fighting Ram, right? You escape one corner to immediately be put into the other. Now Smitty the Happy Chaos knows how it feels to get hit from one tiny hit and be taken all the way to your doom as Solstice seals out another round and is now on match point. Just trying to throw out that Hail Mary Haymaker there with the 6S. It's still, Solstice has been so on point dealing with these clones. The clones are doing nothing for Smitty except draining their health. Yeah, it really seems like they're not such a strong option against Ram, who just has a lot of ways to deal with it and get them out of the way. Here we go again. Rekka's for the hard knockdown PRC to continue the combo. Keep Savvy Kels in the corner. That's exactly what you want to do, but a nice roll out there from Smitty. Has one more chance. He's able to get the confirm. Burst comes out of Solstice and it lands. Trade is going to be in Smitty's favor, though. We're trying to find one option. You cannot let Solstice get in anymore or you will lose the set. You have to keep them at full screen as Smitty burns everything to keep them far away. Solstice does have the meter though. The chip is starting to add up and we need to see that FD. Tries to force an answer with the sword toss, but now she's without one sword. This is so scary just for both of them, but what an air throw there from Smitty. Down to the wire, still alive. Hot reaction from Smitty. He's got, they've got one more chance. Oh, just 6P. It kind of worked for a second there, getting through the sword, but still you're back in the corner, sitting there, hanging out with the sword. All right, this time the clone is actually going to work out for Smitty, allowing them to get that 2K into a nice full combo back into the zoning minigame. Here it comes, the curse pressure, steady aim, focus super, spending it all at long range. Solstice is trying so hard just to work their way in, aiming for just one hit there. He's able to get with the sword, forces the burst out of Smitty. PRC sword gets the full combo. Actually drops the combo in the corner, didn't want to go for the wall break. That was an incredible use of PRC. Solstice has been really trying to save their meter to use it offensively, knowing that they need to carry it forward to take the victory, and they do it. Best super in the game is going to close it out here. Souls is going to have up petrified three, versus two, test your luck. Soul versus Nagoriyuki. Immediately, test your luck has something to prove, wants to bring it all the way back on this loser's run. Starting off really strong, though, already. He's going to get the wall break here. Six, eh, six, six H, excuse me. <laughs> Got tongue tied there. 5K just commanding neutral right now. Petrified finally finding an opening here, trying to bait out something, getting thrown. RC to seal it out. Yeah, pretty quick and decisive first round there from Test Your Luck. Gonna break the wall and take the round with the 6P. All right, yeah, 5K at round start. It's very difficult to contest Nagori. You get round start no matter who you are. So I do like Petrified just trying to go for the run-up walk, right? Exactly. Petrified having to play very carefully here, slowly approaching with his staggered slash pressure, finding an opening here with the counter. Gonna take a nice, simple knockdown. Tries to approach too much, so gets 5P'd into an RC combo. Runs right into a Beyblade as well, and now they're back into the corner is what I would say, but they're able to get a full conversion here. Fast RC, look at these combos, coast to coast. Shane Ooh. McMahon. That's the fun one. Off the backboard, coast to coast with that fast red RC. One of the most fun combos to watch. But speaking of coast to coast, just gets put right into the corner and tossed into the dirt. Test your luck going up one. Test your luck, he's ready to make this happen. He was not happy about getting knocked into losers and he's raring to tear it up down here. Yeah, and Test Your Luck is also a player that they only get better the further their back is against the wall. So if Test Your Luck in any situation goes down to like 2-0, 
that's when the factor turns on, right? The Wong factor, the X factor. Absolutely, but we can't count Petrified out, who has also worked their way here to top eight losers, fighting many a fearsome opponent themselves, although there they're getting count hit. Okay, DPN out of the corner. Fafnir for the plus frames, run up for the grab of tech. Yeah, Cheshire Luck just putting out these big buttons here with the 2S and 5H to try and stop the approach of Petrified. The moment that Petrified gets the counter hit, Cheshire Luck immediately bursts to push them back into the corner, maintain that positioning there. Very careful backdashing from Tester Luck, trying to bait out the DC now since Petrified has showed that option a few times. Petrified opting to play it nice and safe on defense here. But getting clipped, okay, barely getting 2K'd. Yeah, and that was gonna build up a lot of blood as well there too with the Beyblade back into this next round. Petrified still just running forward. There's the bite though, party time for Tester Luck. Fukioing a million times, tries to catch the backdash there with the DP. Quite a lot of blood built up from Test Your Luck from all of those Fukios. The DP on the 5H attempt, but too far away for the far slash to connect afterwards. ERC bite, Test Your Luck going a little ham right now. So dangerous to be in this late round situation with Test Your Luck having all of the blood in the world available. Absolute blood bank. Forcing the first there out of Petrified. This is their last opportunity. They have the meter. Are we going to see it spent? Into the corner. To, oh, look for a wild throw. There's burst, but oh, nothing yes. you can do. I love that. Going to immediately RC into Tyrant Rave, lock out the burst there from Test Your Luck. Petrified, very smart stuff. The one that there's that 5k. This will be a full combo all the way to the wall break. You cannot fight Nago on round start like that. Yeah, that's a clean 50% of your health just getting 5k to start, right? Runs right into the 6D, gonna get carried across the corner, carried to the corner here. Use resource advantage for Tester Luck, plenty of blood to work with in first, which he burns to maintain his momentum in the corner. Luke going backwards to try to bait the DP, and he RCs to get the kill. These crazy 6Ps here from Tester Luck to really stuff the approach of Petrified. Petrified needs to figure out a way to work around that, right? They're running right into these 6Ps. Whether or not they're trying to run in and go for a far slash and immediately eating it, or they're just getting caught because they're not holding back in time to block, they need to figure out some other way to get in on Tester Luck because what they're doing right now is just not working at all. Tester Luck definitely showing off a lot of matchup knowledge here. We'll have to see if Petrified can make an adaptation, prevent the 3-0. Duel one. Let's rock. Round start. Dash blocking from Petrified, not contesting this time, playing it a little bit safer, but again, here's that 6P, really on point from Test Your Luck, and the bite again in the corner with all the blood in the world. And the bite is working out so well because Petrified's really <laughs> three bites there. Okay. Munch, and there's munch, the close left. Hungry boy. So yeah, one thing there is a lot of the things that Petrified is doing for defensive options is either just DPing, which is going to lose to the command grab, or holding block, right? When they don't want to block, they DP. So either way, Bite's going to work out. They need to try and start FDing and jumping out of some of this pressure, maybe throwing in some backdashes here and there, because you just saw they got bit three times in a row. Right, and they're gonna have to make this adaptation right now as Tester Luck once again. Here we are in the left corner, exactly where Petrified has been so much of this match. Putting some safe block strength pressure, getting a six seat, uh, six S. Yeah, that six S was a knife with a nice whip punish there on the whip to H. Fast RC combo. Should be enough to kill with another DP? No, oh, not quite. Goes for the 6S, I agree that HDP could have done it. Will that mistake cost them this round? No. Three frames. Thank goodness. Three frames. The God button, 5K. All reliable. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, yeah, the Goryuki's 5K is pretty good, yeah. too. Speaking of old reliable, Tetra look going for the grab reset. Not going to find it. And finally, Petrified this time going for the backdash, actually getting out and getting a really big punish on that bite attempt. Against the RC for 2K2D and able to extend this with a juggle. Wake up DP, gets the side swap as well. Oh, it drops the dust combo though. Test your luck. Going in the corner. Super jump forward for the counter hit to seal it out. Yep. Three to zero. Axel versus Leo matchup. We got blue water, blue sky as well. Immediately safe play from Raza, baiting out the throw, forcing Stealthy to burn that burst pretty early. But even so, he's in the corner, getting the clash with the 2K, 2D, pushing Razo back out. Here comes Rensen. 
carefully placing these normals, gonna counter hit with the Leo 280. Here comes the back turn pressure. Yeah, has them in the corner here, just throwing out this back turn S over and over. BRC forward gets the throw. PRC to make sure that they can get the kill with the wall break as well. Great awareness there from Razo. Definitely optimal punish from Razo, ensuring they can seal it out in just that interaction. Dashes oh, forward right into the windmill. <laughs> trying to DP over the rents in there. They were probably trying to look for a clash, right? So that they could cancel it into maybe a Berserker Slash. Right, it just wasn't there. <laughs> Razo has burned a lot of health so far, just trying to get in on Stealthy. Stealthy doing a great job of keeping Razo away. Again with the 2K2D Clash going in Stealthy's favor. Yeah, the micro run forward there into the 2H to get the kill. And of course, this is a pretty decent matchup for Axel, right? Able to really zone out Leo because of Leo's approach being more of a box dash. That means they have to be slightly more committal in how they approach. We go mix up after the DP, going with those unstance combos, but Stealthy is ready for it. Punishing, pushing Razzo all the way to the corner, Razzo dashing in. Gonna hit again, dodging the grab. Getting the punish there as well, too, with the dashboard Berserker Slash. And that's going to be a wall break as well. That is why you need to spend the meter to keep yourself safe if you whip that command throw. Uh-oh, here comes the TK Bomber. And Axel Bomber gets the OTG as well with the 2H. 50 meter for both players. Razzo opting for a BRC. Goes for a 5P, but doesn't get anything else off of it. Oh, blocks the goal burst there, but tries to do an IED back. JP has to throw out a burst of their own to stay alive. So important that Stealthy had that burst available still as he's desperately trying to get something done before Razzo pins him down. And there it is, the 2K. And that reel in there from Stealthy reeling in after Razzo blocked the Renson gave Razzo the, the opportunity to actually close the distance there and get the win. Down to the wire. Absolutely, Razzo up here 1-0, but definitely a close game. I am hoping this is going to continue to be a hot set if that first game is anything to go by. All right, jumping straight into the next one. All Stealthy needs to do is slow this down and force the, force the pace of the match, right? That's, of course, what Axel wants to do anyway, is try and force the pace of the match. But Razo is having none of that, getting that knockdown early on and forcing the burst out of Stealthy. Nice counter hit S, though, to beat out the 2D attempt. Look at how Stealthy is very carefully placing these jumping normals to punish. Razo just kind of throwing out kicks over there. But still, these are working out now as Razo is in. That's plus, continuing this pressure. With how good Leo 6B actually is, it's kind of risky to be jumping up against him, whether or not unless you're trying to go for like IED back JS. But right now, Stealthy putting in a lot of work. Razo's got to find an in, has a lot of meter, but no health, and gets traded in the air, round to Stealthy. I love that there from Razo, dashboard into nothing, able to actually catch Stealthy pressing with the 2D. Big confirm here into the corner. Stealthy, where'd your health go? Not again, just getting so many straight hits with these 2K2Ds. There's an unstance mix up again into the back turn projectile super to close it out with a perfect. He's like giving him the pizza. A pizza pie, I'm a Leo. Great just block as well, yep. So that windmill that Axel reels you in with, it deceptively, the hitbox is only lower. The upward spin has literally no hitbox, so you could just hop right over and punish Axel for it. Razo knows that one opening, that one little Axel matchup knowledge check was all Razo needed to take. Stealthy down to one hit and a quick throw on the wake up will take it. Second game to Razo. 2 0 -oh so far. Razo trying to send Stealthy home. or send them to their bed. This is an online tournament. <laughs> They're so already home. They'll just turn off the PC yeah. and then climb in bed, right? <laughs> <laughs> the shortest commute ever. <laughs> Good night. Well, let's see if Stealthy can dig down deep to bring this back here. This is still incredibly doable. Like we said earlier, Stealthy just needs to dictate the pacing of the matchup because so far it's been all Razo. Razo is forcing all these different situations that Stealthy is not able to contest with. And that is a great start right there. Dashing all the way out to try and keep themselves, but the 5K, 6K. You gotta be careful though, because yet yeah, once again, here comes the Leo mix. There's a great answer with the 2K2D, identifying the opening. <laughs> that DP going unpunished, SDP. Yeah, and that DP going unpunished because Stealthy actually went for the explosion at the end of the Renson. Razzo keeping Stealthy pinned down. 
slowly approaching, dash blocking. Stealthy jumping out. Might be five feet back into the corner with you. Plus frames there. No, he doesn't press anything after gets 2K2D. Okay, PRC up to keep yourself safe after that snail attempt. Oh, I love the patience there too from Stealthy. Found the right opportunity to go for super jump air dash. Yeah, looking for an hit, but getting counter hit, rough situation, and getting tagged. All right, great rainwater there at the start. Started to incorporate a little bit more of the layers, right? But a good jump in by D. It's a meter, though. Interesting spacing from both players here, but once again, Razzo has Stealthy in the corner, continuing this heavy Leo stagger pressure, strike throw, back turn, unstance throw again. Oh, did you see that pause as well? Razzo was trying to make Stealthy. Oh my god, what a confirm there. Axel Bomber, really low. Not enough to kill. Leo with the meter, BSing forward, not really, doesn't really get much out of it. Carefully approaching. I love that choice for 5K there as the anti-air. Any other button would have been way too committal in that situation with how close Razzo was. And Stealthy finally able to put a point on the board. Really great patience from Stealthy and awareness. Razzo going for a risky uh, the cross-up dash, but Stealthy was already in the air, ready to punish and put a game finally his name and so we'll see stealthy starting to adapt really well here i like the way that they're playing starting to utilize more 2ks right 2k is a really important button it's axel's fastest button and it low profiles a lot of things it's going to allow axel to get out a lot of really sticky situations especially when their back is up against the wall I and mean, we've seen stealthy do a reverse 3-0 tonight already let's see if they can do it again uh oh 6p from razzo the huge counter not taking the wall break, but he probably doesn't really want it here, especially because now he can wall break with super. Yeah, that reverse 3-0 is not going to happen if Razzle has anything to say about it here. About to get that hard knockdown. Now you have to guess the cross-up. Goes for the same side here with the 2P. RC4 tries to go for the instant overhead, JH. Great, but that's definitely in Razzo's favor, just in terms of the corner control. Especially with all of this meter, Stealthy desperately trying to keep him out. BRC trying to catch him escaping the corner, but a nice, oh my god, what a confirm there after the counter hit JH, but unfortunately tries to go for the command grab, and Razzo, the reactions are so on point. Razzo was so ready, knowing that that option was on the table, unstance to grab, getting so much value out of that victim, it's so scary. Here we are again, Stealthy in the left corner, where they did a lot of the time, counter hit into this very fun That's going to be it. Yeah, Stealthy's dead here. Absolutely, the axe kick is going to close it out, and Razzo is going to send Stealthy to bed with a little kiss on the forehead, tucking them in. But every Happy Chaos player plays a little bit different. So just because Test Your Luck's Luck didn't test out against the prior Happy Chaos, it might be a different story versus Smitty. We'll have to see how this pans out. Smitty, of course, no slouch either, chilling here in loser's quarter after shooting his way through a good portion of the bracket himself. Yeah, I test your luck, quite literally telling Smitty, I can't let you leave here alive, brother. <laughs> it's not happening. And it was Smitty, so that did put, I believe, test your luck in to loser's side. And immediately, here we go. Once again, we've seen it before. We'll see it again. Full screen. Happy Chaos doing his thing. Yeah, and the problem here is look at the blood here on Tester Luck's side. Very challenging for a player like Tester Luck who like, really enjoys high rolling early on in the round. But it really puts him in this questionable situation now where he's forced to take risks just to approach. But it's working out here as it looks like he will get oh the wall pick here. He's at the very tip of his blood gauge. Yeah, one pixel away there. Incredible showing there from Tester Luck threading the needle. That's the really unfortunate thing about this matchup is when Nagoryuki is sitting at level 3 blood full screen, you really only get like one chance to get in on Happy Chaos, right? But, but you boy, have to bank in on it that it's going to hit or you're going to pop and die for it. And what a bank. Yeah. It, like, it, it, it hit. The jackpot. He <laughs> but he'll have to recreate that luck once again. Can he make lightning strike twice in this round? Because so far we're seeing Smitty do his thing once more with this impeccable pressure. They're super focused, gonna get a nice confirm here. Gonna be enough to kill possibly? No, it didn't go for the final gunshot. Not enough focus. 
or tap, we'll do it. He needs to make his move now. He he goes to do that looked like clone startup, but he got shot out of it. Absolutely, the clone startup there. So fortunate, just summoning all the guns too. <laughs> Test your luck. Slowly approaching. All right, he is in. Gets the slash slash to get the knockdown. Slowly approaching with these long range swords, but Smitty finds an opening for himself. And that triple slash is also really good too because it builds back significant blood there for Nagoriyuki, allowing him to keep the pressure on Happy Chaos here. But a beautiful gold burst is going to put us back into the Smitty's Happy Chaos Funhouse. So brutal from Smitty. We've been seeing a lot of gold burst from this uh, from Smitty tonight, and he's really spends all of the meter to keep Tester Luck far, far away. Gold Burst is what Happy Chaos wants to do, right? Of course, Happy Chaos can get that regular burst and kind of still play the same zoning game, but having that 100 meter on deck is going to really lock down the opponent. Has to be careful, though, starting to get a negative penalty. Never mind. <laughs> he said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going negative. I'm in, I'm in danger. You're in danger as Smitty takes game one. And I feel like every time Hotashi pops into the chat, it's when poor Nagoriyuki is just getting shot by <laughs> by Happy Chaos. It's bad luck. It's bad luck. <laughs> no, they test your luck is going to get that luck factor back. You can't count them out. We've seen so many times that when they go down 2-0, they're just able to bring it back. They turn into a completely different person. Or sure. we've seen this adaptation from Test Your Luck before. He's got to change up something. And here he is. Once again, he's in. Smitty immediately burning the burst, putting Test Your Luck into full screen. Now is the time. Have you learned your lesson? Can you get in there and approach? Finding it. That was a really clean super jump, but he gets hit as he lands. Good super jump as well, moving just a little bit forward, trying to thread that needle a little bit more. So see, Tester Luck just has to wait for the one second that Smitty has an opening. It's so difficult because I mean the meter gain that Smitty is getting with this and then using the focus super to just continue building his resource, maintaining his pressure. It's so difficult for him to get in. He finds a clove, but he ducks under, he gets the 2S. Banking it all on this, there we go. Able to actually land that 5D. A little too far away, I believe, to actually get the 6H or just drops it because they didn't want to get the wall break there, but a jump back and do a button there. Smitty's going to take that round. Go slash slash taking the knockdown. 2K, 2D. Beyblade getting hit out of it as he goes for something that is a little too slow. Great just block there, too. And that was a good response, too, from Test Your Luck. Noticing the just block and immediately Fukioing backwards. Test Your Luck trying some mix-up game now. A little bit of high-low showing up, but Smitty finding the counter hit to get him out of the corner. Off to relieve the pressure a little bit, just take clone for safety. And it's going to be a blue beat combo, too. Actually doesn't decide to go too far. There's the blood pop. That's why they ended the combo yeah. early. And that's going to be Smitty up 2-0 right now over Test Your Luck. Man, you know, it takes so much uh, brain for a Happy Chaos player to play and watch their own meters. So shout out to Smitty for having enough <laughs> brain capacity to keep track of his two meters and Test Your Luck's meters, too. Yeah, absolutely, putting in so much work right now. This, I mean, I mean, this is just a really difficult matchup. We, we've we been stressing it so much. This is so hard for Nagoriyuki to deal with when they're in certain situations like level three blood. And a lot of Nagoriyuki players love to be in that re level three blood position because of the increased range on those norms, right? Smitty going for a clone round star, but Tester Luck is ready, cutting right through it, getting into this corner position where he wants to be in. Smitty jumping out, Tester Luck playing very slow here. Oh, Stagger there gets hit with a big old 5H mortal counter. That's exactly what Tester Luck needs, but Smitty sniffing out the bite attempt and just throws out a goal burst. He's doing, Smitty doing such a good job of being mindful of the meter. If you're watching that meter, that was a very, very obvious bite from Tester Luck. Smitty was absolutely ready with the goal burst, and here we are once again, all the meter in the world. A, a quick clone gets him in there. This could be his opportunity. Backdash, he's no punish with the backdash. Has to go for the reload there. Jump S is gonna do it! Able to get the confirmed 6H taking the round here. Test your luck. Excellent approaching from Test Your Luck, sealing out the round. Can he make it happen again? He's gotta do it. His tournament life is on the line. All right, there's the burst. It's gonna put Happy Chaos in the corner, but Jump H into the clone. Gonna eat that 6P and get sent full screen. A clone looking like a pose today. I mean, it functions in a really similar way. 
on defense from Smitty. Uh-oh, he gets hit. Backdash, safely backdashes, though. There he is again. He fakes the empty. Yeah, goes for the 5K there to try and looks like maybe catch Smitty going for the backdash or the jump. But that's going to be straight. No, actually decides not to go into Deus Ex Machina. Limited blood for Test Your Luck. He's only going to have maybe one other opportunity, but Smitty had 100 meter. And just going to town here, bullet after bullet. It is a shooting gallery. Smitty at set point now here against Test Your Luck. This is the last chance trying to chase down there with the Beyblade. Burst comes out. Smitty playing so smartly with the Burst. Luck has got to approach me. Again, he's just stuck here with very high levels of blood, limiting his options, moving forward and getting caught with the steady aim. Not only does he lose all that health and positioning, but it puts his blood in an even worse position. Yeah, but Smitty is just keeping up the rhythm, too, of this zoning game. Test Your Luck is getting chipped out here. I mean, they got to have to FD at this point or just block these gunshots. Level 3 blood, too, is not looking too great right now. And there it is, Smitty closing it out right now with the Deus Ex Machina 3-0 over Tester Luck. Great showing to Tester Luck making this far, but Smitty's... And we're playing on the White House stage as well? Okay. Letting the intros rock for the mirror match. I mean, Leo's got a good intro. It's that smile. That damn smile. <laughs> Ridiculous. Two gorillas enter, one gorilla will leave. Oh, and they even have the same brain cell, both going for 5k at round start here. Okay, great use there of the guard point. K7 show off, starting off with the early lead, able to catch the backdash there from Razzle, but the DP is going to come out. OTG2. Alright, full screen fireball for <laughs> Razzo opting to go into back turn, reflecting the fireball, getting a solid combo off of it. Again, reflecting the fireball. It doesn't go that far when you reflect it. Oh wow, JD actually beating out the back turn uh, P there. Back turn P is an incredibly strong uh, anti-air tool, so it's nice to see JD actually being a tool that can beat that. There's the wall break too. That is the loudest wall break in the world as you go into the building looking for some 2Ks here, trading fireballs. So chunky there, PRC, and then the BRC too, but still gets hit by the back of the cross-up. OTG there to take the round. Razzo with the early lead. This round start situation yet again. Razzo actually tries to go for the Micro Dash 4, but runs right into a 2K there from K7 show off. No fear on the DPs from either player right now. All right, here we go, strike throw. K7, the just block into the guaranteed throw punish. Now it is Razzo's pressure. Oh, and Razzo trying to chase down that with 5D, but they're going to get punished themselves for it. There's the Axe Kick. Actually doesn't go for the Super there. Probably wouldn't have been enough to kill. Instead, wanted to hold on to the positioning. Huge oh, bouncy hey. combo. <laughs> and 100 meter for K7, though, as he immediately wakes up and burns it all for this air throw. Oh, the OTG not quite enough to kill, though. Razzo just holding FD for their dear life. ERC forward. Oh, gets the counter hit. There's the burst. Forced out K7. Razzo playing so cleanly. Can't take a hit. Can't take any chip. Back turn reflect. Oh, oh Razzo had the right idea. Was trying to go for the back turn anti air 5P. But we saw earlier that JD beats it out. And K7 was able to do it there. Razzo really loves, really loves to react to Fireball by going into back turn and taking the reflect. It's really working out for them. All right, burst there is going to allow Razzo to keep the corner pressure. But they're actually going to back up a little bit, trying to give K7 just enough room to overextend here. Dashing in, K7 playing on the defensive here. Razzo with the throw into PRC to take this combo. Let's see how they're going to, yep, goes for the wall break there with the 5P. Neutral situation, K7 with the meter. Razzo finds the 2K2D though. Fireball clashes here, gonna reflect it back. Oh, yeah, this time trying over. to go for the pizza super. It hits him. Yeah, that hitbox is so high up. It's so tall. That's the extra large pizza. That's the piezilla from uh, <laughs> from Five Star Pizza. <laughs> that thing is like 18 inches in diameter. You ever had one of those? Oh my God! All right, we're gonna jump right into our next game too.
All right, Razzo taking the first game in this mirror match. All right, these round start situations are also incredibly important so far. K7 Shelf has kind of been winning them most of the time here, but Razzo, not deterred, able to turn it around. Two 2K 2Ds in a row there. Okay, nice counter hit, gonna spend the meter, make sure that they get the knockdown, but the burst is coming out there from Razzo. Careful spacing from Razzo. I kind of feel like Razzo is, is uh, more effective at the longer ranges, whereas K7 is playing better at the closer ranges in this, in this match. Yeah, it's interesting to see those strengths and weaknesses between the two players, right, on the same exact character. Strike throw from K7 in particular, very strong. Solid use of meter to take this conversion all the way. 100 meter for Razzo, though, and this is a neutral start. BRC forward into the grab. Classic. Oh, tries to go for the back turn, dashboard, baiting out possibly, you know, an overhead or anything, trying to get K7 to block. It doesn't work out. We can play here. We go once again, K7 with the grab. Another signature here, spamming that, that S slowly approaching. It does move you forward a tiny bit. Carefully baiting out, trying to bait out the DP perhaps, getting hit because you can't block there. Good jump out there, but a PRC right into an air throw. K7 dominating this neutral game right now. Okay, Razzle starting to show their own run up throw. Chasing down is going to get a combo off this fireball landing. And they actually are able to get it all the way to the corner and the wall stick there. Wow, that was so far from the wall. A very hot pickup from Razzo, and it continues K7 having to burst or lose the round. All right, nice throw there, though, from Razzo. Able to take the round here. Razzo really upping their throw game, almost as if it's in response to K7 throws. I mean, that's something that you do need to do. Once you realize that what you're doing maybe isn't working as well as you thought it would, start going into that next layer, right? And the next layer for Leo is to start incorporating a little bit more of that strike throw. Here, Razzo goes with all of that meter from that gold burst. Leo cannot block gold burst and back turn, so it is a solid option. Razzo just, it's party time for Razzo now. Yeah, and that back dash to bait up that DP led to absolutely massive damage here. Razzo still with 50 meter on deck. Positive bonus is still building that up. There's the RC, is gonna get the confirm. This should be enough to kill with the wall break. No, not quite. It sticks with just one hit away. Are out in the yard, fireball PRC forward to get something started. Goes for the throw, but Razzo is already in the air. And that is 2 0 so far, right now for Razzo. Razzo really proving to be the more dominant player in this mirror match so far. And it is, it is what you're saying is that Razzo is doing a lot better at those mid and longer ranges, whereas K7 is definitely dominating up close. But Razzo is doing a really good job of forcing the pace of the match, forcing K7 to play that more footsies heavy game, right? But once K7 is able to get them knocked down and get them in the blender, Razzo's having a really hard time dealing with that. Yeah, definitely, but it's still working out for them as they're up to, oh, they're finding the opportunities to, to push this forward, get the damage, secure the victories. K7 is the one who has to do something to change this up. Here comes that throw pressure back turn. Oh, actually, the trader burst comes out there from K7 after the trade. All right, now playing this fireball game yet again. Fireball back and forth. We're looking like Street Fighter 2 right now. Oh, my God. The air confirmed here straight into the Berserker Barrage. Hard knockdown into the corner. Throw text, throw text. Both of them getting huge reads on each other. 5D gonna hit RRC into this full wall bounce combo. K7 actually opts not to spend the meter to get the knockdown after the wall break. Interesting there, wants to hold on to the meter for neutral. PRC to keep themselves safe after that BRC there from Razzo. All right, I like actually how patient K7 is being here. It's actually gonna work out in their favor. They're taking this round. So that's really interesting. Normally we see K7 constantly throwing out fireballs whether when they're that far away or trying to move in on Razzo. I like that, being a little bit more patient, making Razzo a little more uncomfortable, right? Force them to come to you and punish their mistakes. Absolutely. Both players are being a little more hesitant with the DPs now as well, except that one, which was in a combo, so guaranteed. But on the defensive, they've both been making each other eat a lot of damage for it as Razzo carries this combo all the way to the corner, also opting to break without me. All right, PRC going to confirm after this fireball. Should be able to get the wall break as well. Going to super? No, actually just going to go for the Berserker Slash. 100 meter for Razzo. 
Almost a hit. There we go. 100 again. PRC to continue this. We'll just go ahead and take another wall break. Why not? Oh, no. That's that's K7. I got the colors yeah, mixed no. up. I'm colorblind. K7, here we go with the fireball game. Okay, K7 needs to be careful, though. You can't afford to be trading, but the 5 p anti airs there is going to put Razo at set point now. The simplest option is sometimes the best. Great, just blocked there, but unfortunately, Razu can just keep that far slash heavy slash going in tandem. K7 taking space, thinking about their options. Oh, Razu actually starting to get a danger negative penalty here. Right, running right into that fireball. Tried to go for the throw and ate the follow up there from the guard stance. PRC4 to punish the ending frames of the back turn slash. K7 fighting out of the corner with a long range counter hit, far slash, forcing out the burst. Yeah, K7 still with nearly 100 meter on deck and burst. Back turn damage, forcing the burst out and at risk of losing the round. Counter hit! Doesn't have the meter to get, there it is! Builds up the meter just in time, gonna close this out with the wall break. Razzo with a hell of a confirm there right at the end to go 3-0 over K7. Show off, sending K7 hacking. Wow. What a set. White Umisho versus Solstice. Immediately Umisho starting with aggressive button options, forcing the burst from Solstice. Yeah, this is the kind of matchup too where I think that Happy Chaos probably wants to play a little more aggressive, right? They're not going to be able to freely sit back and play that uh, mini game, that Happy Chaos mini game. So they want to kind of brawl just a little bit there, play that mid range game because Happy Chaos doesn't only have great zoning, they have incredible buttons. Absolutely, but I mean, Ram has incredible buttons of their own as Solstice fights their way out of the corner and has pushed Umisho all the way to the edge. Umisho, though, knowing exactly when to run out, punishing the IAD with the 6P. Rekka into PRC, continuing once again all the way back to the left corner. Backs up, goes for a throw, but Umisho is already out of their counter hit. This is going to kill. Yep, here we go. Deus Ex Machina to break the wall and finish that off. What a sick super. It is pretty sick. He just shoots wherever he wants. I mean, it's the same mechanic as an H button. He just shoots and it hits you. Who knows how it happens? Solstice not letting up, though, immediately starting with some... Oh, never mind. Umisho has turned it around, continuing this close range pressure. Yep, he's able to land the 2D right into Curse. Keep that Curse on deck so that all of your uh, ready aim shots focus in a lot faster. And there we go, another Deus Ex Machina to break the wall. Not going to be quite enough to kill this time, though, but it's going to get that hard knockdown, which means a guaranteed curse or focus, most likely. Actually going to go for clone. Umisho almost playing as if Happy Chaos is Zata right now, but Solstice has the answers with this Rekka into hard knockdown, punishing with the jail button, jump P out of the corner. Happy Chaos does have nearly 100 meter on deck, but so does Solstice. We could be seeing maybe a YRC soon. Solstice being very conservative with the meter on this pressure. Just wanting to use it to maintain advantage for as long as possible. That risk gauge is full though. Next hit is going to be a mortal counter. You got to get the hit though. Well, Umisho is able to actually get the hit. Going to start playing this zoning game. Look at these. These bullets are slowly pushing out Solstice. Able to get the headshot and take game one here. And all it took was patience there. Weathering the storm that is Ramathal's corner pressure. Yeah, he, Umisho looked at that risk meter and was just like, whatever. It's a danger. It said it had the little it had the little symbol. You were going to die if you got a hit. Fine. No problem. Chilling, blocking, finding the exact right opportunity. Yeah, Umisho said, my character doesn't have a reversal. I'm always in danger. Yeah. <laughs> is, what's the reversal? I, the reversal is me. I have the reversal. <laughs> I just press the button. Is it invincible? No, but I'm invincible. It's fine. <laughs> Round two, Solstice. Oh, okay. Trading. Not able to carry that forward. Okay, gets a hit with the sword toss. and going to be able to carry that all the way to a super wall break for Okizemi. Yeah, blink and you miss it. Umisho nearly already dead. One more confirm here from Solstice is going to be able to secure the round. Happy Chaos with really no resources. There's no reason to spend burst. You don't want to be a hero. And the meter is not where Umisho wants it to be. Well, look at these just blocks here. Next hit is going to be a mortal counter. Doesn't even need it, though. The throw is going to do it. Yeah, Solstice really just extending these block strings as far as possible, throwing as late in the string as they can to try to make sure that Umisho stays blocking, and it did work out that round. But here we go, Umisho with the counter hit into this huge jungle combo, off to leave them in the corner. All right, 5D is going to confirm afterwards, gets the crumple. Actually goes for the wall break there too as well. 
DRC forward. And that was actually Airborne with a JP. Utilizing the utilizing clone into PRC drift forward, that actually makes Happy Chaos slightly airborne there. So he's trying to go for a little cheeky overhead. Yeah, incredible obscure knowledge of their character coming in the clutch. Once again, solid round start combo. Ops to not take the wall break. Let Solsa tech back into the center, but that's okay. Umiko is playing pretty fearless here. Six speed does not extend the Rekkas for the knockdown. All right, goes for the back throw actually here. Back to mid screen. Gets a wow, what a cross up there though from Solstice. PRC is going to force the P, oh, the excuse me, BRC is going to force the PRC there out of Solstice to try and contest my RC versus your RC. Here we go. Gold burst, the happy chaos. Gold burst. These happy chaos players are so good at identifying their opportunities. This could be what Umi Show needed to make to get the pressure back. PRC over the, <laughs> the six speed. Yeah, guarantees the curse there too on the knockdown. Super focused back into the mini game here. Solstice just trying to find a way to get in. It's about to be chipped out. Throw the sword, Solstice, do it. Has to start spending meter if they don't want to get chipped to death. Waiting. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> the little stare down there, but I love the back dash there from Solstice into the 5k to take it and tie it up. Incredible patience, just waiting for Umisho to approach past the clone where he could actually hit him. Absolutely. Great patience there. So good there from Solstice, one of the premier Ramathal players in North America. But now we're going to have to see if Umisho can still keep this up, right? Solstice was able to make those adjustments, but I really like the way that Umisho is playing, being a little bit more aggressive with Happy Chaos. Dual one. Seen people take a game from Umisho. So, Umisho doesn't want to let Solstice get another one as we get once again immediately this solid round start. Yep. Here we go once again, just any little hit is able to carry all the way breaking wall with David X Machina for the hard knockdown. And look at the health bar. That's the common phrase with Gilpin Gear Strive. Look at that health bar. Oh, that yeah. damage. Oh, it's a high damage game, all right. We show pretty decisively there, taking round one. Oh, actually trying to 5 e there? I don't know if that's what they wanted, but the sword is going to push them here into the corner. Umisho still has burst on deck, and you see Solstice trying to play around that right now, not going too hard in. Solstice playing very careful to keep Umisho in the corner, happy to take little trades if they are in their favor. There's some strike throw. Oh, actually, that time, Umisho was expecting Solstice to try and run in. So throughout the preemptive 5k to stuff Ramathal's dash, but didn't work out and got blown up for it there, literally, by the sword. Levels upon levels of conditioning happening in this high-level winner's final night. And yeah, that's these guys in incorporating the next layer, right? The next layer of the game plan. Option to not take the wall splat, knowing that it is more advantageous to just keep in the corner and get the curse up. Focus super online, doesn't have to worry about resource so much. Plenty of time to reload, too. Able to backdash away from the heavy slash, too. Solstice just trying to find that one hit to be able to turn this around. That burst actually works out. Back to this neutral game. Oh, no! So I don't know if Solstice actually saw, but Umisho had no focus. Yeah, for one brief moment, that was the only time we've seen the empty meter. And can he? Can they carry this forward? What? The just block into the guaranteed throw punish with one pixel of health. Umisho, insane mastery of the innate system mechanics. That was not even a happy chaos moment. That was just being good at Guilty Gear Strive. That was... Okay, someone will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was multiple just blocks there because that hits multiple times. So I actually had to, and of course, when you do just blocks first one, you can just keep hitting back and it's a lot easier, but that was multiple just blocks there to get that throw. That is crazy from Umi Show. Impressive use of a mechanic that, what is it, two frames? Three frames? Yeah, two frames. That is a two frame window, and we're online. It's rollback, and it's good, but it's still online. Wild. Umi show up 2 1. Once you want to take the set here, and immediately look at this. My favorite thing about Umi show so far is I feel like every round start we're seeing a slightly different Happy Chaos playing, as this looks a little different. This kind of close mid range this time. Uh oh, eating some counter hits for their trouble, though, slowly backing up. 
All right, 2K, 2D, Umi Show, they're doing so well right now here. Just trying to play around, but they get hit by a meaty double sword slam. Okay, holds on to the corner there after the explosion. Throw, OTG close slash. Another, okay, so more strike throw coming in here from Solstice. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a very wise move from Solstice. It's so great to keep having Chaos in the corner, especially when even if they have meter, there is no reversal. However, Umi Show, just a master of these round start situations, getting huge value, putting Solstice into the corner. <laughs> Looking like Ramblethal, honestly. This is Ram pressure. Just locking down here, too. You have to watch out for the strike throw game coming from Umi Show as well. And ending with the final bullet there, that was actually genius stuff, the way that they structured that pressure. Ending the final bullet with the ready aim stance so that they could get more plus frames to be able to reload their bullet. Insane, insane play from Umisho. I feel like Umisho just stole Solstice's game plan. Like they sw they soul swapped for a moment there. And this is set point here for Umisho trying to move themselves on into grand finals. Got the two clones out. Just for intimidation factor, here comes once again a side switch. Great blocking from Solstice, iron defense. That wrist gauge is starting to build up though here now. And look at the patience too from Umi Show. Umi Show knows not to pull out the gun at all in neutral against Ram unless you're on the offensive. That's what they teach you in self-defense classes. <laughs> Someone with a knife has time to run up and hit you before you can pull up a gun, you gotta be careful. All right, great air tech there. Solstice gonna get the counter hit. Side switch as well. Needs to be careful for the burst. There it is, right on cue. On the meter for Umiko and a lot of resource. Carefully trying to get in with empty, but you're out of meter, you're gonna get chipped. There's yep. nothing, nothing Solstice could do. So unfortunate, a checkmate situation. Umi Show going to be sitting comfortably here in Grand Finals at DreamHack Beyond. Solstice still has a chance, though, on the loser side of the bracket. I'm sure they're going to be clawing their way back up. On the best stage as well? Good taste. I do like this one. I'm very, I'm very fond of it. Already read the synopsis. He doesn't want to watch the story mode. All right, what's the music? Chaos. Okay. Dual one. Let's rock. And immediately, Razo starting with running up 2K. Not afraid to DP. We're too close to start throwing those gun bullets out. Uh oh, that one misses though. Counter hit gun pull. Gotta burst that. Jump on the pulsation already good, but here we go. Dashing in with the 2P. I love how hyper aggressive Raz was being. It's absolutely what you need to do in this matchup. Showing no fear. Here comes the grab. Back turn pressure. Oh, unstance. PRC is backwards to get out of that. Yeah, unfortunately, the slowdown there from Smitty's was not allowing Raz to actually get in with the 5K and get the punish. Multiple hits on that fireball going through the clone. Great option there. Oh man, the, the micro dash forward two on that. He got the BRC combo, excuse me, the, the blue beat combo. And here comes the steady aim. Doing so much damage still. I really like the approach that I was seeing from Razzo with just a couple adjustments. This pressure could be what they need. Once again, forcing that burst out against the DP. Great option against the up close pressure as having us cannot block if gun is out. All right, puts the gun out just in time to be able to block that 2K dash up from Razzo, setting him back full screen with these gunshots. Dash block, dash block. Leo with a pretty good and fast dash, able to actually get in in a way that we've seen other characters struggle with. Slowly approaching, Smitty burning everything to get back as far as he can, as far as they can. Patience here from Razzo, finally able to get in with the 2K. Combos into the DP here, has the pressure that they need. Smitty has no burst on deck. Yeah, see they continue, ooh, a greedy heavy fireball to continue the pressure, but it goes unpunished as he finally gets a hit into the kill. There we go, and of course, you have to keep in mind that getting this very first game is so important, especially against Happy Chaos. You do not want to allow Happy Chaos to get that early lead because it just gets harder and harder to come back. Definitely. And, and Leo, of course, is kind of a momentum-based character given the way that Leo's back stance works. It is kind of literally momentum-based. You get the knockdown into the back turn, and that is your moment of power. 
looking for the opening carefully, using fireballs. Pretty scary against a hit scan projectile. Okay, the burst, is, the burst is first out, forced out there from Smitty. Oh, great. Hitting with just a tip there up to West, but a nice PRC forward. PRC forward, going to be able to break the wall here. And takes game one, Razzo. Solid play. I really enjoy uh, the use of meter in that uh, the blue Roman yes. cancel, giving Razzo plenty of time to recognize that Smitty was actually in the middle of the gun pull out animation, and Razzo could take any punish they wanted. Yeah, so that's one important thing, especially in this matchup, because Leo does have, like, a box dash, which makes him, you know, he has to dash forward multiple times to be able to get in. It's not just a run like a lot of other characters. Utilizing that RC to move yourself forward and get the slowdown there on Happy Chaos is a really key thing to this matchup, especially if you're, it doesn't even matter who you're playing, right? It's key to utilize that RC to slow down Happy Chaos and get your way in. Every inch of resource matters, particularly against a player as competent and happy chaos as Smitty here. Although Razzo running some offense, punishing the curse with the dash. You cannot get that for free. And yeah, and Smitty is just blocking all of these fireballs too with their face here in the corner. No burst on deck. 50 meter though, gets caught with the Berserker Slash and the dash up 5D, fast 5D as well. That was twice in that round that Razzle was able to punish the curse throw with that uh, the Leo dash flash. Yeah, that's a really great option for Leo. Any forward advancing move is really good against Happy Chaos, just because they're constantly trying to usually move backwards. Dashing through Cologne as well. Razzo definitely showing off some matchup knowledge here as Smitty gaining space finally finds an opening for a steady aim combo. Yeah, and in that situation, you do have to be a little bit careful about how you deal with Happy Chaos's clones. We saw before that when Solstice was going up against him with Ram, uh, using a lot of 5k. You have to use your fastest normal that can recover really quickly so that you do not get punished by the gunshot. Oh, <laughs> Razo doing a little Happy Chaos Goomba stomp of their own. Double jumping over the clones, trying to find an approach, not able to punish the curse that time, getting counter hit by the 2s. Bursting or die, but it doesn't matter. Steady aim, able to punish that fireball. Okay, running immediate DP, you'll love to see it there. He's gonna be able to get on blocks the first. All right, Raz is starting to play really clean. Yeah, incredible resource awareness on the part of Razzo, forcing with this big wall, wall bounce combo. Often to just let them fall. And super, to finish it out. Breaks the wall. 2-0 to Razzo so far. Really looking like they have the answers in this Happy Chaos matchup. And Razzo is one of the best Leo players in all of North America. So it is no surprise that they have gotten a lot of matchup knowledge against Happy Chaos. If you're going to be playing at a top level in Guilty Gear Strive, you have to learn the matchup, right? There's no excuses. This character is strong, but you just have to learn how to deal with it. Absolutely. This is the reality that we're in. Happy Chaos is really annoying to deal with when they're playing that zoning game. But Razzo has learned how their character can capitalize on the mistakes that Happy Chaos players make and is really putting in the work right now on Smitty. And that's yet another benefit to this era of rollback Ooh, netcode wow. that Razzo can fight a Happy Chaos player as good as Smitty any day of the week online. Whereas before, hey, if, if the top tier character is an obscure person, no one locally plays them, uh, I guess you're out of luck. Oh, great 5P anti-air there. That's gonna force the burst out of Smitty. Uses the Berserker Slash to try and get in, but he's gonna get shot all the way back to full screen. Comes the focus, super steady aim pressure, carefully backdashing the bullet there. Look at Leo dancing around the, the cursor, dodging the bullets. It's just like the Matrix. Beautiful pickup, too, on that counter hit. 2D, this time goes for the blast ride power bomb. Oh, see the throw whiff, jumps for the air throw to close out this round. Razzo definitely feeling it right now, potentially on set point. But Smitty. Starting off really strong in this round here. Already has Razzo down to half health. Curse is applied. Oh, tries to go for the run up throw. Doesn't get punished for it though. Razzo was still landing. Patience from Razzo comboing into the DP. Off to take the heavy. Blocking the YRC into a bad punish in the corner. Not taking the wall break. Taking these plus frames back to F. Yeah, you need to be careful with trying to go for multiple axe kicks there. It is really easy to see and immediately go for the backdash, but what a great throw, putting Smitty's butt right back in the corner. 
Blocks the gold burst there. Very difficult to punish. It's invisible all the way down. But there, one PRC combo, and Razo is going to take it 3-0 and move on. Sealing it out against Smitty. Well played on the part of Smitty and a very impressive uh, run for sure. Character, they are hot off of that round, although it can be quite the, the changeup to switch to fighting Ram. Yeah, it's a different kind of matchup, right? But immediately going up with a dash of 6P, I love that too. That's going to cover a lot of options, like if Ram tries to go for that far slasher at start. Like, oh, I'm free. I can press buttons again, but Razo with the throw. Oh, bad DP there, whiffing it all the way up north. Going to get punished, losing over half their health for this one combo. A quick, about 90% damage here with the wall break. Razo opting not to burst out at any point. I mean, Ram is really hard to burst against. And another whiff DP just take the round. Two punished DPs in the very first round. If I'm Razo, I'm heavily rethinking that option now. Great stagger pressure there, too, from Solstice with the 2K. He's going to get the knockdown here. Goes for the safe jump, JH. Just standard block string there, ending with the heavy slash, wanting to stay at that range, right? The tip of far slash and heavy slash range. I love the just block from Razo, not accepting the corner pushback, but still Solstice is ready once again with the throws. Here comes the tech. Razo's turn to get out of there. Dashing through the Mortobato. Solstice has to PRC. Razo is trying to counter. It was too late. Okay, 5P tries to go for the runner, is able to hit the back turn. H overhead has corner positioning here now, harassing with this back turn K. There's the axe kick, get all those plus frames on deck. Oh no. Here we go though, that's still plus. Incredible defense and patience from Solstice. We've seen some incredible defense from Solstice earlier. This is panning out, but just that hit's gonna do it. And Solstice's core, I mean, excuse me, Razo's corner pressure is kind of insane right now. We wanna talk about how strong Ram's corner pressure is. Razo's really showing how strong Leo can be. If they've got the defense, slowly blocking low, no high low to worry about here, but getting clipped by the Rekka 1, Rekka 2 into Mortobato for the hard knockdown on the wall break. Yeah, get all that damage and make sure that they don't even get to think about bursting here. And we're going to do it yet again, right? No burst for Razo. Uh, and that's it. A perfect there to end out the very first game. Solstice up one. Really rough when you don't have the opportunity to use the burst. Sometimes it's better to use it earlier when it feels like an op. It, when it feels like it might not be optimal than it is to, to hold it to the end because you can't take it with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely there. It's always tragic you die with burst. But that's the great awareness there from Solstice. You cannot burst once the startup of super happens in a lot of cases, once the super flash begins. So it's always key, always great to have that awareness that sometimes you just immediately go into super to make sure you lock out your opponent's burst. Let's see, Raz is gonna hop right back on the sticks here. Or on the book, I guess, that's what it is. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the little book, you know. We, there's no there's, there's no technology in, uh, in <laughs> yeah, the Guilty, Guilty Gear, Gear world. Uh, you know, we're talking a lot about the Guilty Gear lore today, but uh, you know, I guess, yeah, welcome, I guess we're both lore heads, so welcome sorry, Stream. DreamHack Beyond with our Guilty Gear yeah. lore stream. You gotta deal with it, all right? There's no, they don't have technology, it's not allowed, it's all magic, so yeah, that's right there. They don't have a PS4, they got, Book station for <laughs> unless we're not gonna get into the well unless you're in depth but okay let's <laughs> all right anyway get it game two Solstice versus Razo all right Razo trying to start off with that dash up two feet yet again gets the run through and the grab okay this time fakes out with the back turn to get a yet another grab I really do like how Razo is kind of just mixing in the parry here and there right oh what that kill perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Very intentional, like, resetting their pressure okay. to reset the combo scaling, making sure that does a ton of damage. All right, Solstice turn for corner strike throw. I, uh, I'm still a little speechless that that killed. That's, <laughs> that's kind of nutty. But here we go. Solstice not even phased by one second. Already putting in the work here on Razo and turning this around. About to put in a perfect of their own right now. This is Guilty Gear. You guys got a little tired of zoning. No zoning here. Just walk. Oh, that could have been a throw. <laughs> that didn't even go for a hit punch. Just said, oh, here you go. Just caught him. <laughs> Landed. I'll catch you. I got you. Perfect to perfect. Ah, Guilty Gear. <laughs> all right, Solstice is taking that all the way to the wall as well, breaking with the big sword swing. You see, Solstice took that first round personally, it feels like. 
Vato on the wake up, gotta do it. Yeah, locking down in the corner there with the sword explosion, so much range. That's one of the frustrating things about fighting Ram as well, is that when you get put locked down into the corner, she can keep you there from so far away just by throwing out that far slash, right? Just locking down so much space. Again, a character with a lot of really great options for a lot of situations. Look, Raz Razzle's just got to take Solstice's advice, right? It says you should have 6P. You, you guys see Ubisho hiding there? Hiding up <laughs> hiding there? Hiding behind the pillar? Like, uh, like the you can't final see, boss? You can't see me. <laughs> just the Akuma aura, the final boss <laughs> up there waiting. <laughs> just like standing in the corner with a lampshade. <laughs> Ubisho knows too. <laughs> you can't see me. John Cena. All right, going into game three, Solstice looking to close this out as quick as possible. Razo has got to make an adjustment if they want to bring this back. 5Ks from Solstice taking Razo to the corner. 2K, 2D going to take him right back out. All right, and I like the slide swap, side switch there too from Razo, this time pushing Solstice into the corner, but Solstice immediately with a super jump air dash to escape. Great movement here from Razo, getting a nice punish after Solstice whiffs that far slash. Impeccable spacing and movement. These dashes are so clean. Here comes the pizza. Okay, they may option. He goes for a punch and gets counter super. That was not quick. It's a quick recovery move, not quick enough to be safe there. And what you saw too was Razzo was being very cautious too on the approach, trying to look out for something like that and still ate the Mortaba. It's all right though. They're able to take the round here. All right, 2S at round star is going to push Razzo back a little bit. Oh, 6P. Staggered close slashes. Looking I, for a mash. Yeah, ending those block strings right with the um, with the guard point. The whiffed Rekka, not a huge punish though. <laughs> Five pieces of trading, little, little hits right now. All right, he's going to get the hard knockdown here as well. Jumps into far slash, or jump slash, I should say. ERC to block the 6P attempt. Solstice being very conservative with their meter, only really using it like either to seal something out or using it in response to Razo's burn. Although here comes the PRC to continue, got a burst or you will lose the round there. The very tip of the swords, cross up. YRC, oh wow, Razo, excuse me, Solstice is actually going for 2K there. I was kind of scared that Razo might just throw out the DP, but. Slash right through the 6P, just a little bit too far. Easy to punish, there's no hitbox on that thing. Yeah, that far slash just blowing up the 6P attempt there from Solstice, I from Razo. I think Razo actually threw out the 6P a little too early and got caught in the recovery frames. Just block on the cross up into a guaranteed throw, putting Razo back in the corner. Razo trying to fight their way out of it with these 5Ps, gets into back turn, cross up, cross up. Yeah, which way are we gonna be? Goes right into the Berserker Barrage. Gonna break the wall too. That's gonna be a hard knockdown here for Razo. Meter on Razo. We've seen Super come out a lot of times, but not this time. <laughs> or Razo had to be mindful of Solstice's Super. All right, 6P with the run through as well to try and catch. Is able to land the overhead here. And Razo's gonna be able to close that out and go up one on the board. Not out of it quite yet. Not yet. Still in it for sure. Both players want to fight their ways to grand finals. While Umi Show lurks up there in the shadows I'm waiting just, for their challenger. I'm just losing it. I can't. Every time I see that aura. <laughs> it's kind of menacing. It's horrifying. <laughs> you get home and you just look and behind like the door is just flames. You're just waiting for the, the like, happy chaos secret ball. What are you doing in my house, Umi Show? <laughs> Dash block to start. Razzo carefully approaching. Two Ks from both having to burst. Yeah, and forcing that burst out early there. Razzo does not want to allow Solstice to get that early momentum going. BRC. Wow, that BRC really slowed down Razzo trying to jump in the corner there. All right, this time the Solstice is going to spend the burst to keep Razzo locked down in the corner. More of an aggressive burst style. Got to trying to find their way out. Wants to deny Solstice the opportunity to pick that sword back up and take advantage while their offense is a little bit limited. Carrying this block string forward with stagger pressure and catching the back dash. No punish. That move is so difficult to punish too. Razzle with the right idea, trying to go for the 5K, advancing forward, quick button. But being able to combo after the BRC there catches him. To back turn, gets mashed out, and here's the Rekkas for the hard knockdown. Still down to the wire. BRC, BRC, like I said, Solstice saving their meter to use in response to Razzo, denying them the opportunity to take some advantage there. Oh, Razzo with the micro dash forward, 2K, able to take that round. All 
All right, immediate far slash, heavy slash, a round start there. Razzo with a good challenge. Oh, the 5K actually beating out the 2D, and because the 2D puts Leo airborne, Razzo's, or excuse me, Solstice is able to actually get the full confirm. Here comes the counter hit into a full combo there. Charge dust laser to break the wall. This should be enough. Oh, it's not, just barely. Not quite, but it will be a hard knockdown, which is going to allow Solstice to put in a little bit more pressure. Run up throw. So powerful. Ram has huge run speed. Fly speed? <laughs> Careful spacing. You're already in the corner, Razzo. He's, he's got to do something to get out of here. Backdash yeah. there to bait out. It's actually able to bait out the first two with the 2H. Solstice, big brain here. Just needs one more touch to get rid of Razzo and move on to grand finals. Razzo has had just no luck with any of these deep keys. This set finds a counter hit in back turn. That burst is going to hit at the very apex of that knockout. No throw on that IB. And there it is. Solstice able to close it out 3-1 over Razzo to a reset. I believe in them. We've been seeing some fantastic play from Solstice. Let's see if they can get this going. A lot of 5Ks immediately taking some offensive advantage here. Taking a throw. Great opportunity for that. Immediate 5P, slap in the face, stop approaching me. Micho is so aware of the gaps and pressure. It really feels like they know every single matchup. Getting counter hit by the record, though, PRC to carry this forward as far as possible, all the way to a wall. No, they stop. Very wise. Okay, jailing them out there, too, with that JP, not letting them escape. All right, 2K, 2D. Yep, immediately into the gun draw. Solstice with the patience to wait for it. Strong round one from Solstice. Again, I really love the, the patient dropping the combo at the end of the wall to make sure that you don't reset to neutral. I love that Musho pick Storyteller for this, for this grand final song. Good taste, good taste. <laughs> and uh, immediately, though, that nasty Happy Chaos round start. Half of your health is gone. Here comes a throw from Solstice to turn the tables. Yeah, that was a great reversal throw there, too. Awareness. Goes for the OTG with the close slash immediately into the sword. Tries to chase up BRC and gets the throw as well. So much meter for Umi Show, but they have no way to spend it. I mean, that's the thing. When you're pushed so far back, they're actually able to land the burst, though. YRC. Oh, great blocking there, too, from Solstice. Able to block the roll through. But now their back is against the wall here. They still have burst. What a backdash there, too, on that gunshot. Flipped it around. Ram has the corner up pressure now. They also have burst. They can, okay, just a 5K is going to be enough to open them up and take the first game for Solstice. It looks scrambly, but it's really not. You're seeing that these players are really trying to put themselves in certain positions and throwing out these really fast buttons, just trying to steal that turn back, right? That's something that's so important. You don't always need to go for the big haymakers in matchups like this. Sometimes all that's important is getting that 5K or that 2K into the 2D, getting the knockdown, and then running that game plan, especially against Happy Chaos. If you're up close against Happy Chaos, you might as well just try and fish for that knockdown so you can get your game plan rolling. Totally. The combination of knowledge and reaction time needed to punish the gaps and these pressure strings from both of these characters is impressive. Well, the FDIB to get Solstice out of Lumito's face? Yeah, if you're fighting a Happy Chaos that knows how to consistently IBFD, that's terrifying. That is terrifying. I think that that's one of the first IBFDs that we've seen from Ruby Show today, but that was very effective as, look, the pressure has totally turned. Uh, Solstice forced to burst to get out of the corner. He's able to land the 5D into the gunshot, gets the hard knockdown as well, gets three loads of few bullets. Look at this pressure. And it's so difficult to figure out when it's your turn because Happy Chaos can press that gun button at any time. Yeah, not even press. They can negative edge it, which makes it so dangerous. But here we go. Solstice is able to actually escape and turn the tables around. Umi Show, of course, with Burst still on deck, so Solstice is going to be trying to work around that. Able to get the throw here. Patiently blocking, knowing there is no high low to speak of. You're just looking for that throw. But as long as you're burning FD, they don't have that much room to do it. 2K going to get in there, bursting to get out of that Rekka, or else you were dead. Oh, runs right into the loving embrace of Ram with all there. Solstice is absolutely ready. We've seen Unisho do the run-up throw against a lot of other players, but Solstice not having it. Uh-oh, waste of burst in the air, though. 
Gonna be sent through the wall, absolutely, with that 6S. Positive bonus here for Happy Chaos. Here comes the block range. Here's the strike throw. Yep, gonna pick up with that. If you can PRC the throw, it still leaves them airborne, so Happy Chaos can immediately pick them up with a close slash. Rouse our curse is still having enough time to block. This is a great situation for Umisho. Carefully playing around the spacing with these lucky whips. Very carefully placed. Solstice is struggling to find an opportunity when Umisho is up in their face like this. Super focus here is going to get the slump. Reload three bullets to make sure that they are absolutely meaty. Get the throw yet again in the corner. OTG tries to go for the Super Mario hop. I'm so scared of this happy chaos lethal pressure. But one big counter hit like that is all Solstice might need, but a PRC forward perfectly placed. <laughs> out of bullets! Umisho oh, was out of bullets! Well. But it doesn't matter there. Solstice is going to be tied up now against Umisho. Umisho bringing it up to 1-1. One, one. I'm always so impressed when I see a player react to a clash like that. I never feel like I'm able to recognize that situation in time. Umisho's reaction speed and awareness are really just <laughs> unparalleled right At now. At a certain level, a lot of these players, when they, they'll, they'll be inputting things while the buttons are out, right? And that is a very like next level thing for for player, that's really difficult for beginner players. When you're hitting some of these longer recovery buttons, it's always important to either immediately go into block FD or hit something else because if it clashes, you will automatically go back to a block stage. Right, very smart buffering on the part of Fumi Show. Solstice carries the pressure, counter hit. Look at how far, look at how much corner carry Fumi Show has on these combos. 5D. Not gonna get the. I, just gonna go for the super here. Doesn't want to get the wall slump. Respectable though. You're gonna get the hard knockdown, build damage, guaranteed curse here as well with maximum bullets. That is checkmate. That's not. That's not invincible. No. Okay. The timing. The timing wasn't there. As long as you time it with you know, all the recovery of that move, it can hit. What do well, I know? <laughs> Solstice has one chance here, but this is looking pretty scary. No meter. You're gonna get chipped. There's ah, finds the opening. Six P just to try and escape here. There's no way. Okay, oh, 5K. Runs right into the toes. All right, immediately with the round start, 2D there. Solstice not running forward, though, so able to get the punish. Oh, my God, just getting that jump over, putting Solstice here in the corner. Great JH. Just a little too high to get the confirm after the counter, but that's all right. They're going to get the counter hit on the Rekka. Just got to be careful with some of these buttons. They were before they were finding the gaps. This time, Solstice has adapted their pressure to account for it. It's swapping in frame traps that are working perfectly. Perfectly. Speaking of perfect, perfectly placed 2K 2D there to escape the corner from Umisho. Then Umisho showing shows no fear when their risk meter is red. They are not afraid of getting hit whatsoever. Here we go. They're going to get a guaranteed focus or curse. So these are the situations where it's really important to pay attention to Happy Chaos's bar, because that was the time when Solstice could have rushed in. Umisho was not going to be able to get multiple gunshots off with the focus bar so low. Yeah, this is a great, great situation for Umisho, but uh, Umisho able down. to get out. Yep. Yep. Chase down with the six S, attempting to backdash. So many 6s in this game are good for catching backdashes, right? The first thing that comes to mind is, of course, Souls, but that's going to put Umisho at two one now, threatening tournament point. Absolutely. Uh, Umisho looking just so dominant tonight. I mean, Solstice can definitely do it. We've seen uh, their game plan against Happy Chaos quite solid. Umisho is just seeming like a master of adaptation. Solstice is going to have to do something wild to bring this back. All right, here we go. 5K. I like that trying to stuff there at round start. But here we go, being pushed into the corner. Happy Chaos with two bullets left, but the super focus here reloads three bullets right in Solstice's face. Knowing that Solstice, Solstice is scared. That's conditioning. And look at that risk gauge building up too. Next hit is going to be a mortal counter. Goes for the throw. Treasuring. Solstice cannot find the opening, showing a bit of fear. Playing very safe. Oh, the backdash getting caught. And this is huge damage with that risk gauge. And that's... Tournament point right now for Umisho. This is Solstice's last chance. 
hitting him with a hacky sack just for a style counter hit burst immediately. Yeah, you had to burst in that situation. Happy Chaos was going to do so much damage to you, like they're doing right now, putting Solstice into the corner, dropping the combo though, and instead to go for the focus and build back up that meter. Only has two bullets left right now. Looking for the opening, both players playing so carefully with their normals here, finding a 5D overhead, but doesn't convert it into anything. Gets a hit here though, RRC. It's gonna be nice damage too, when you get that counter hit on the final hit of the Rekka leads to big damage. Able to block the YRC, but trying really hard to bait out that burst. Jailing in the corner, does not want to give up this situation for anything. Solstice knows that if Lumicho gets out of the corner here, they are done. Runs up with the 5k 2D there. This is rough there, missing their sword too. Umi shows out of bullets. This is Solstice's chance. Finally, Umi show runs out of reason. No for way. Once, but it's fine because they get the throw and they can carry this forward all the way. Burst, you had to burst. Umi show is still out of bullets though, but Ram runs right into the throw and Umi show is going to take the very first Dream Hack Beyond for Guilty Gear Strive. Well played to Umi show. 